following is a Rogers Sports presentation. Last season, without a strong go-to guy on the power play, the St. Michael's Majors struggled with the man advantage. The expansion team ranking dead last in the Ontario Hockey League. This season, the situation is the exact opposite. The Majors currently rank third in the league at 27.8%, led by Captain Mike Jefferson and rookie forward Sheldon Keefe. Tonight, the Majors power play will get the test as they face division rival Barry. getting set for another great junior hockey matchup, the Barry Colts and the St. Michael's Majors. Good evening, everyone. I'm your host, Mike DeJong, for tonight's broadcast. Well, the Barry Colts, one of the toughest teams in the Ontario Hockey League, boasting a roster of several top NHL draft picks. The Barry Colts, one of the new Central Division rivals, as mentioned for the St. Michael's Majors, one of the teams that St. Mike's will definitely have to beat to make the playoffs. Here's head coach Mark Napier. A very talented team. They, uh, you know, they're ranked in the top ten in the in the country, and uh, I'm sure they're going to be very uh, formidable opponent uh, throughout the year and, and into the playoffs. But uh, um, you know, it's it's I guess it's almost a given that they're going to finish first in our our division. That's how talented they are and, and how well they're coached. And uh, and it's kind of a dogfight for the rest of us for uh, you know for two, two through four to to make the playoffs. So. Um, Got a lot of talent in the team, very well coached, a very disciplined hockey club, and to beat them you have to uh, make sure you just try and stay out of the penalty box and, uh, and play hard every shift. So it should be an exciting game here. The Barry Colts and the St. Michael's Majors from Maple Leaf Gardens. Now upstairs to our play-by-play -play crew of Tim Haffey and Glenn Lowe's. Glenn, a division rivalry this evening in Maple Leaf Gardens. The Barry Colts and the Toronto St. Michael's Majors. This is the first of six meetings between the Colts and the Majors this year. Now, this Barry Colts team, a very strong team. They have three NHL first-round draft picks in the lineup. First off, Daniel Kachuk. Uh, Daniel Kachuk, here's a very talented player, probably Barry's top player this year. He's a very, very talented guy, as I said, uh, leading their team along to hopefully a Memorial Cup berth this year is what they're gearing for. Uh, he was Calgary's first-round pick in 97. I know Barry's very happy to have him back, and we're going to have to watch him tonight. Daniel Kachuk, the offensive leader of the Barry Colts, and number 27 is Michael Henrik. Michael Henrik, here's a big power forward. Another first-round pick to Edmonton in, uh, in 98, just, just this past year. Uh, from what I told you, he had a good camp, and I know Barry's happy to have him back, and uh, he's just adding to the overall flavor of a very talented Barry Colts team this year. The Toronto St. Michael's Majors making a deal today. They acquired big Brent Mulder from the Belleville Bulls. And big he is. I saw him earlier with his shirt off, uh, Tim. He's a big guy. He's going to have a, uh, a big impact, uh, bringing a lot of toughness needed to this uh, St. Mike's team. And uh, he'll be a treat to watch tonight. Now, the Majors, most of the scoring has been generated by the likes of uh, Keith Jefferson Barnes this year. There are other forwards on the Majors. Uh, Coach Mark Napier is looking to step up. One of them would be a second-year winger, Ryan Walsh. Yeah, second-year winger, uh, Ryan Walsh, again, uh, he's on their second line, and I know he's going to be instrumental in trying to bring some extra points to the second line and, uh, and helping St. Mike's uh, win their first game here in Maple Leaf Gardens. Ryan Walsh ranked very high by the scouts last year, drafted third by the St. Michael's Majors in the 1997 draft. The Barry Colts and the St. Michael's Majors, let's go back downstairs to Mike DeJean. Thanks very much, guys. Yes, it should be a good Central Division matchup here at Maple Leaf Gardens. Seven NHL draftees in the Barry Colts lineup, including the, uh, the players that were mentioned by Tim and Glenn. The uh, St. Michael's Majors need a victory. They've lost uh, two in a row after their mini two-game winning streak, so they definitely want to get a jump start on their Central, Central Division rivals, the Barry Colts. Now we go back upstairs to our play-by-play -play team of Tim Haffey and Glenn Lowe's. Good evening and welcome to Maple Leaf Gardens. First of six meetings between the St. Michael's Majors and the Barry Colts division rivals this year. Let's take a look at the starting goaltenders 
for this evening's game. Starting in goal for the St. Michael's Majors second year goaltender Corey Batten boasts a 3.74 goals against average 903 save percentage and Brian Spinley the splendid sophomore 17 years of age 918 save percentage fourth best in the Ontario Hockey League and the sparkling 2.43 goals against average both goaltenders making their ninth starts of the season. There's a look at our referee Al Kimmel. And Glenn, the Majors and the Barry Colts. Mark Napier has a lot of respect for this team. But the Majors have been playing reasonably well here at Maple Leaf Gardens, even if they haven't won this year. Very true. And uh, with the scoring power we have with Barry in Toronto tonight, uh, these goaltenders are going to be tested all night long. And we're underway here at Maple Leaf Gardens as Coach Mark Napier starts the number one line of Ryan Barnes, Mike Jefferson, and Sheldon Keefe, the Quinty connection for the Majors. Chris Cava and Sean Cation, the fourth member of that Quinty connection, on the defense for the majors the daniel kachuk line on the ice for the barry colts as jefferson brings it over the line for st michael's the colts clear the zone but chris cava hustles it back to the blue line now cleared out and whistled down on the offside we've played 33 seconds here at maple leaf gardens We're speaking of burt templeton earlier before the game uh you know he's had a lot of experience in this league when i played back in the uh middle the middle 80s uh that was, uh, he was a, a key coach up in North Bay. Gerald Moriarty suffered a shoulder injury in the last game against Guelph, so he is scratched for the St. Michael's Majors. Chris Boucher is out with a shoulder injury as well. He's missed five games. Matt Le Mike Laceby's been out all year, and poor Matt Ellis is still bothered by mononucleosis, but he is at the game this afternoon. Meanwhile, all the healthy scratches for the Barry Colts, all the scratches are healthy scratches, as Coach Burt Templeton has made a few... Uh, Roster shakeups, uh, three changes from the game against Plymouth on a Saturday night. We'll discuss those further as the Barry Colts are whistled down on the offside. So the faceoff coming outside the Toronto Blue Line, but continuing with those scratches for the Barry Colts. O'Keefe Pierce on the defense are scratched, as is Adam DeLue, a first round draft pick last year. As Coach Port Templeton like looking to work in Jerry Connell tonight, their second round draft pick. He effectively is replacing Adam DeLue, and he's got a couple of rookie defensemen looking to get in this evening Kevin Parfrey and Rick Hideki as Ryan O'Keefe and Brad Pierce step aside. Barry Colts control the draw, fired into the Toronto zone as Corey Batten stops it back of the net. Now the Majors will work it out on the left wing. Here's Brock Boucher bringing in on the left wing, dump into the far corner, puck back of the Barry net. Puck carries around on the near boards and Jeff Tetzlaff will lead the rush to center. Tetzlaff, right wing, looking for Nick Smith. Smith bumped by Hines. Here's Smith, back of the net, circling the net, wrap around to the backhand, and Corey Batten makes the save. Now puck at the point. Ed Hill keeps it in. Shot deflected wide. Puck back of the Majors net. Centered in front, but Ryan Walsh will gather it up, and Walsh will send it out to center. We've played one minute and 35 seconds here in the first period. No score. The Colts and the St. Michael's Majors. Mike Jefferson takes the puck at center, back for Chris Cava. Ryan Barnes will start at the center, right wing for Keefe. Keefe takes it on the skate. Keefe down to the blue line, puck carries on over to the far side as Ryan Barnes applies the body, and the Colts throw it out to center. Chris Cava crosses the red line, pass intercepted. Now here's Keefe over the line, hard shot, and Brian Finley steers it aside. Keefe back of the net for St. Michael's. Barnes in front. Jefferson throws the body. Now Keith Delaney will work it out for Barry. Delaney left wing too far, and Corey Batten will cover up side of the net. A little skirmish behind the net. Uh, nothing to worry about. Number 16 for the Barry Colts, breaking in on the left wing. Tim Verbeek, the, the younger brother of... NHL veteran Pat Verbeek. There's uh, quite a discrepancy in age. The, the much younger brother, but Tim Verbeek, a veteran of the Ontario Hockey League, played in Guelph and Sarnia last year and coming to the Barry Colts this year. Well, as we mentioned, there's a, there's seven NHL draft picks uh, on this Barry Colts team. they got a lot of scoring power, and, uh, you know, he's just going to be another, another uh, additive to that. So Tim Verbeek, a good hockey name, as the Colts control the draw. Quick shot right on, and Batten steers it aside. Majors bring it out on the left wing, pass at center. Majors player Pinizzato reaches for it. Now Pinizzato follows up into the corner. Pinizzato, nice job, takes his man out of the play. Chris File and Daryl Bootlin, the good young rookie first-round draft pick, will send it into the Toronto zone. 
Mark Popovic out there for the majors. Speaking of first round draft picks, the majors fourth overall selection in the 98 draft as Popovic battles in the corner. Mike Guff goes back to help. Now Guff gets it back on the net and Philip Lacos bumps into his man, Daryl Bootland. Now Lacos takes the hit from number 15, Jerry Connell. Connell back in the lineup this evening for the Barry Colts. Here's the Laney shot from the point. Batten steers it aside. Bootland has the rebound. Bootland's pass intercepted. And the Majors will start it out at center. And there's a look at the new guy. Brent Mulder taking the pass at center. Goes down and Mulder will skate to the bench after his first shift as a St. Michael's Major. Yeah, good opportunity there. Just couldn't keep up to the puck. And, uh, you know, you're going to see a lot of him tonight. Brent Mulder adds a real physical presence to the Majors' front lines. Majors have really beefed up up front the last week or so with the addition of Ryan Barnes from Sudbury. Now Brent Mulder from the Belleville Bulls. Here's Jefferson back on that centering. Barnes, the shot. That hit a leg as Rasmussen pinches in from the point. Ryan Rasmussen back in the lineup this evening for the St. Michael's Majors, taking over from Gerald Moriarty, who has the shoulder injury. Here's Jefferson over the line. Jefferson, the fake, trying to jam it past the Barry defenseman. But a nice play by the rookie Parfrey to break it up. Jefferson back of the net again with Keefe. Keefe gets out of his way. Jefferson finds Keefe. Here's Keefe along the board. Cycles it low for Jefferson. These two are dangerous down low. We've seen this all year. Jefferson and Keefe. Keefe on a six-game point scoring streak. Jefferson has managed a point in each of his last five games. Puck carries into the Toronto zone. Mark Hines back to touch, and that will come back on the ice. Glenn, some talk that there might be a little rift in the Majors dressing room, but I think that was uh, fairly well diffused by veteran Gerald Moriarty this week. Uh, granted, the number one line of Keith Jefferson Barnes has been seeing a lot of ice. Majors have been involved in a lot of close games recently. They've been seeing a lot of time in the power play as well. So maybe some of the other guys not getting, maybe it's not, maybe not as quite as much ice time as they might like, but I think the challenge is for them to step up and uh, take advantage of the ice time they do get. Well, I, I remember the three years that I played for the Toronto Marlboros, and uh, in each year there was time that I spent uh, on the bench more than I spent on the ice, and it's just part of the uh, the growing process, and it's and it's also it's uh, it's trying to put together lines that are going to work together and and work together steadily on a, on a game to game basis. And uh, Mark Neighbors got to try new things to get this this club uh, uh, up to the up to speed as to where they think they should be at this point. Saw a shot right on by Kenny Karoop. Karoop with Jason Cannon and Brian Simpson aligned for the Majors. So this is effectively the Majors' number two line. As Simpson brings it over the line, Simpson scored two goals in his last four games. Puts the shot right on, and Brian Finley will cover up. Let's just look at those other two lines for the Majors. We've mentioned Karoop, Simpson, and Cannon. The other line that Mark Napier is looking for some offense from would be the George Nista centered line with Brock Boucher, the veteran, on the left wing, and Ryan Walsh should be profiled in the pregame on the right wing. And Brock Boucher, big Brock Boucher. You see him on front of the net quite a bit, and uh, they're going to they're gonna use him, I think, from time to time on the power play to try to create some sort of havoc in front of the net. This goaltender's quite hot, and they want to test him. Coach Mark Napier in his second year as head coach of the Toronto St. Michael's Majors had the added position of general manager added to his portfolio this year. Reg Quinn, the president of the Majors, bumping Napier up to GM and head coach this year. And the, the Barry coach, a good friend of yours, says here's an interception. George Nistis with a steal in the Barry zone, but the play quickly broken up. Popovic fails to keep it into the line. And here's a break from Michael Henrik. Henrik in alone, just lost control of the puck, reaching for it, but Batten was able to steer it aside. Ed Hill keeps it in left point for the Colts. Dumps it into the far corner. Mark Popovic is on it. Now Hill pinching in, shot right on, and Corey Batten will cover up with Glenn. Talking about Bert Templeton, you know Bert very well from your playing days with the Toronto Marlboros. Uh, Bert's been around the OHL for a heck of a long time, but he was telling us before the game that he actually was an assistant coach to... Reg Quinn. Uh, yeah, the Majors president, Reg Quinn, way yep. back in the early 60s uh, in, in Burlington with the novice team. Yeah, hometown uh, hometown boy, uh, Bert Templeton, uh, spent a lot of time in Burlington. That's where I grew up and still remain uh, living there today. And uh, his name is synonymous with minor hockey. And uh, he's, he's had a great career with the OHL, uh, starting off uh, in, in, in Hamilton, Niagara Falls, and uh, moving up to North Bay, and, and now uh, uh, leading the, uh, the Barry Colts this year to, uh, to what started to be a very good season for them. One of the great veteran coaches in the Ontario Hockey League, uh, Larry Mavity and Brian Kilray, could be included in that group as well. 
14-23, the time remaining in the first period. The majors in the Barry Colts, no score here at Maple Leaf Gardens as play whistled down at center. Tim Haffey along with Glenn Lowe's, Mike DeJong, our studio host, Troy Ryan making his debut as our statistician this evening. And welcome to you, Troy. Face off just outside the Barry Blue Line. Scott Cameron, the rookie from Pol Cor Colburn Junior B, fifth round draft pick from Hammer, Ontario will step in against the Majors' Kenny Karoop. As Karoop forces the job forward, Martin Skula takes it for Barry, left wing. And pass at center, broken up. Majors clear to center, and Skula will try it again. Martin Skula, lead pass, intercepted by Jason Cannon. Cannon brings it over the line on the offside. A good attempt to stay onside there by Kenny Karoop, but uh, tied up with the Barry player and wasn't able to, uh, to stay onside. Well, and the Majors and the Colts will meet six times this year. Three times here at Maple Leaf Gardens and three times at the beautiful Barry Molson Center. They played four times last year. Despite not being in the same division, they took into account the geographical proximity. Played here at Maple Leaf Gardens as well. The Colts won that game 4-1. They took three of four from the Majors last year, but the Majors won the last game, a 5-2 decision at the Barry Molson Center. A surprise win on the road for the St. Michael's Majors late last year. So the Majors have a one-game win streak against the Colts coming into this game. No score, Barry and St. Michael's will take it. I believe Gardens is rocking. We hear Jimmy Holmstrom on the orchestra, on the organ. <laughs> Gave him a full orchestra there for a month. Sounds yeah. like an orchestra, though. There's not, enough room in that, uh, there's not enough room in that booth for an orchestra, that's for sure, Tim. Gets a lot of sound out of that equipment he has. Jimmy Holmstrom handling the, the organ and sound chores here at Maple Leaf Gardens uh, for the majors as well as the Toronto Maple Leafs. So the, the majors with the A-League musician help for their home games here at Maple Leaf Gardens. Puck clear to the blue line. Sean Cation keeps it in for Toronto. Sheldon Keefe turns and fires it just wide on the short side. Again, Sheldon Keefe has managed to point in his last six games. Third in OHL scoring. Cation delivers the hit. Ryan Barnes keeps it into the line. Now Schvidke gets it out for Barry. Puck loose at center. Chris Cava gets to it. Cava dumps it into Barry territory. Quickly after it is Ed Hill. Here's Hill turning in his own zone. Outlet pass doesn't work. As the Majors doing a good job on the forecheck, Sheldon Keefe very aggressive on the forecheck. Generates a lot of uh, opportunities in the offensive zone, even when he doesn't have the puck. Absolutely. He gets around He gets around faster than any other teammate or any, any one of these guys in, on, on the ice uh, tonight. He's one of the quickest ones out there. There's no doubt about it. Shot from the point by Chris File. Knocked down by the Majors as Ryan Barnes will clear it out to center. Ed Hill, the big rookie for the... Barry Colts cross ice to file who fires it into Toronto territory where Chris Cava turns. Cava avoids the check. Now Cava is checked as Denny Schvidke engineers the steal. Schvidke working low with Daniel Kachuk. Now the majors flip it high and out as Andre Lakos, number four, the former St. Michael's major, brings it back over the line. Lakos in his first game against his former teammates as Corey Button handles the wrist shot from Lakos. And Corey Batten will be tested tonight. Uh, we saw earlier uh, Kachuk with a good opportunity. The puck just got away from him on a breakaway. And, uh, you know, that, that's one of the uh, one of the things that uh, St. Mike's Major going to have to stay away from, and that is giving those, those grand opportunities to the Barry Colts tonight. 
That's a good line for the Barry Colts. Daniel Kachuk with the rookie, Denny Schvitke, who leads the Barry Colts in scoring, Schvitke. And Connell, the other member of that, actually Claire, the rookie. Fraser Claire, the third member of that line. So Daniel Kachuk playing with the two rookies, Schvitke and Claire. Colts' other big line featuring Michael Henrik on the ice now as Cannon brings it over the line for Toronto. Cannon rolls it to the slot area. Loose puck intercepted and cleared to center by the Colts. Mike Christian gives chase. Here's Christian into the corner. Karup quickly on him. Christian turns, can't find the puck, but his teammate gets to it. Tetzlaff the shot, and Batten will make the save. Nick Smith finds his man Tetzlaff. Smith again with a shot, and Batten tested yet again as Kenny Karup will skate it out. Karup off the boards. Long lead pass for Brian Simpson. Simpson will follow up. Martin Skula back of his net. Skula right wing for Tetzlaff. Tetzlaff on the long dump in. Batten out of the net. Leaves it for Ryan Rasmussen. Rasmussen left wing for Brian Simpson. Simpson crosses the line. Flips it in as Simpson, Cannon, and Karup go to the bench. Majors on the line change, and here comes that Quinney connection again. Barnes, Keefe, and Jefferson. Already they force a turnover. Here's Barnes, Keefe, side of the net, back in. Jefferson takes a whack, and Brian Finley makes the save. Look at that, Glenn. Just right over the bench and all right off the bench and already forcing a turnover. Not only are they good with the puck when they get it, but they're also great at getting the puck from the other team. The three of them check like demons. Keefe and Barnes combining to force that turnover as Jefferson tries to bat it down at center. Mark Hines off the boards. The Colts kick it in on the delayed offside as Keefe tries to bring it out. Poke check by Henrik, and Keefe runs into big number seven, Ed Hill. Ryan Rasmussen clears it ahead. Henrik rubbed out of the play by Mark Hines. Puck carries into the Toronto zone as Brock Boucher goes back for it. Boucher, right wing. Keefe. Flips it ahead now. Keith Jefferson and Barnes are back of the bench. That was a quick little shift as the Brock Boucher George Nistis line is out there for the majors with Ryan Walsh. Walsh ahead for Nistis. Walsh into the corner. Walsh centers intercepted, but Boucher keeps it in. Walsh in front, but Finley steered it away. Walsh looking for the rookie George Nistis in front. Daniel Kachuk leading the rush for Barry. Kachuk fakes, takes it deep. Here's Kachuk back of the net as Schvitke in front. Now Kachuk ridden out of the play by Kation as Andre Lacos tries to keep it in, but Kation will skate it out for Toronto and being hooked up in the play by Daniel Kachuk. Quick Andre... shifts out here for the uh, for the St. Mike's team, keeping the strong legs uh, moving quickly. Yeah, they are switching it up pretty quick this evening, aren't they? Martin Skula deep in his own zone, looking for the sanctuary of the area behind the net. Pursued back there by Jason Cannon as Skula had to hustle it out. Popovic intercepting. Now Popovic takes it. Popovic right wing for Cannon. Cannon takes his time. A nice job by Jason Cannon firing it around the boards and able to hug the board so Finley couldn't get out to corral it. Players bump in the Barry zone. 9.20 the time remaining in the first period. Barry and Toronto still no score. Skula takes it over the line. Skula wrist shot left wing and Corey Batten makes the save. You know, we were mentioning about quick shifts. I think Mark Napier's game plan here tonight is going to be uh, uh, to try to offset the offensive thrust that, that Barry has. Is going to be trying to get Keefe, uh, Barnes, and Jefferson out there, uh, not only to present opportunities and, and take advantage of those opportunities, but get them out against some of their weaker lines. If you can actually tell, if you can actually say they have a weaker line, Tim. They're a very deep team, these Barry Colts. We had a look at Fraser Clare, the former North York Metro A player from Unionville, Ontario. You know, I did a, I did a little homework before uh, before we started tonight's game, Tim, and found out that uh, of the uh, of the Barry Colts that are playing tonight, 11 of them come from the uh, Greater Toronto area. Uh, you know, again, uh, reiterating and proving that uh, Toronto has a great uh, a great hockey history, and uh, there's many many players in this league that have gone on to the NHL that are from this area, and uh, uh, it's great to see. We'll try and focus on some of those local players for you as we like to do on these St. Michael's broadcasts. There's number 15, Jerry Connell. With the Barry Colts back in the lineup, a second round draft pick as Adam DeLue steps aside. Yeah, this and, and another Toronto boy from Scarborough, Ontario, played in Ajax. Ajax Provincial A. So Jerry Connell figures to be a big part of the Barry Colts franchise. Very strong Barry Colts team. And as you mentioned in the opening, Glenn, this team is considering Memorial Cup. And why not? With three NHL first rounders in the lineup, Blue Chip goalie and Brian Finley, all sorts of depth, some Good size and finesse 
on the blue line and some good rookies like Scott Cameron leading the rush centering and Connell buries it. Connell has scored. And what is referee Al Kimmel signaling? Is he signaling goal? Yes, yes indeed, he is. he is signaling goal. A little bit of hesitation there. Seemed uh, a little bit of hes hesitation until we saw the official call, but Connell did put it past Corey Batten on the rush, and the Barry Colts go in front by a score of one to nothing. Well, here's a nice crossover, and uh, Batten got a good piece of it, but just couldn't manage to keep the puck from bobbling out. And there we see Pinizzato trying to uh, make that final attempt to, to grasp the puck. Too late, already crossed the goal line. It's one nothing, Barry. The rookies, Jerry Connell and Scott Cameron combining on the rush. Cameron taking it down the right wing and nice lead pass for Jerry Connell well, driving the net. That two-on-one started with, uh, with, a, with a pinch in from the defenseman on St. Mike's. I believe it was Popovic who, uh, who pinched in and, uh, and got a little caught behind. And, uh, you know, you leave this Barry team with a two-on-one opportunity and they're going to take advantage of it as much as they can. And congratulations to Jerry Connell playing in only his fifth Ontario Hockey League game, his first OHL goal. So the Scarborough native Jerry Connell, who I'm sure has many friends and family in the stands this afternoon, this evening rather, for his first game in Maple Leaf Gardens as Nick Smith lets it go from the off wing and steered aside by Corey Batten. Mike Jefferson for Toronto. Majors trailing 1-0 here at Maple Leaf Gardens. They have yet to win at Maple Leaf Gardens this year, Glenn. They, they've had some close games. Uh, Two ties and two one-goal losses in the last four games at Maple Leaf Gardens, but they are 2-4-2 two, two here. Yeah, and they, they have provided some exciting hockey in addition to that. Uh, as close as they have come to winning, uh, you know, getting a ticket to get down here isn't as hard as everybody thinks it is. And uh, I know that the St. Mike's Majors would appreciate the support down here. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great opportunity to get down here for an expensive reason to, uh, to have a family night out. Should say the Majors are 0-4-2 at Maple Leaf Gardens, winless in their first six starts here this year. 7.35 remaining in the first period. Colts leading 1-0. Tim Happy along with Glenn Lowe's and Mike DeJong here at historic Maple Leaf Gardens, the new full-time home of the Toronto St. Michael's Majors. Mark Popovic banks it off the glass. Puck rolls into the Barry zone. Chris File will touch on the icing with 7.15, the time remaining here in the first period. Don Cherry was uh, up in our Fan 590 studios today, Glenn. He's very excited about the Mississauga Ice Dogs home opener, the brand new Hershey Center Arena coming up Friday, October 30th. We mentioned that, we stressed that, we emphasized that because the opposition being provided by the Toronto St. Michael's Majors. And uh, history would show us, speaking to Dave Harris, business manager over Mississauga, and uh, uh, this will be the very first inaugural uh, 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 OHL game played in Mississauga, and we have the we have the privilege to play there. Uh, history has shown that back in the 1800s, when Mississauga had a junior A team, then here's a break for Simpson in alone and steered aside by Brian Finley as Brian Simpson just snuck in behind the cover. Simpson another shot as Finley tested twice by the Majors second year player Brian Simpson. Great opportunity for Brian. Here's Michael Hendrick, right wing, quick shot, knocked down by Batten, loose puck in front, they whack at it again. Now another blast from the point just wide and Batten scrambling around. Keith Delaney, back of the net. Now the Majors cleared up in the right wing and Jason Cannon will skate it out to center. Cannon turning at center. George Nistis fell over the line. That will come back on the offside as the Puck cleared the red line with 6.32 remaining here in the first period. Yeah, as I was saying, uh, uh, Tim, talking to Dave Harris uh, from Mississauga, and he was mentioning that uh, back in the 1800s when Mississauga actually had a junior age, I think it was poor credit. And uh, the first game they ever played was against the St. Michael's Majors back then. So uh, it's sort of a, a, a rebirth in the sense that uh, Mississauga is back in the OHL this year. St. Mike's in the OHL, and the first visit that uh, that's taking place at the uh, at the Hershey Center is, of course, the Toronto St. Michael's Majors, and uh, it's an exciting event. And I know we're excited to have them down here as well. That's a nice historical anecdote provided by Dave Harris, the hardworking, what's his title, business manager. Business manager. The, that's right. Mississauga Ice Dogs. The Dogs are in Windsor this evening as they hit that western road swing through Windsor. Sarnia and Plymouth. The, uh, the Barry Colts actually coming off that three-game swing through the West. They managed two wins in Windsor and Sarnia and coming off a 5-1 loss to the Plymouth Whalers on Saturday night. That Whalers team just incredibly strong this year with David Legwand and Paul Marr in the lineup and all sorts of great players. Harold Druken, Nikos Chelios, very strong Plymouth Whalers team. Very strong. 
6.04 remaining here in the first period as Ryan Barnes moves it ahead. Pass to center for Sheldon Keefe, a little ahead of him as Andre Lacos back with Martin Skula. Here's Lacos, cross ice for Martin Skula. Skula right wing for Daniel Kachuk. All the big names out there for the Colts as Kachuk runs into Chris Cava. Now the puck on the near boards. Kachuk moves it ahead. Danny Schvidke takes his man. Up against the boards. Kachuk parked in front looking for the centering attempt. Players bump in the corner. Down goes the Majors player. Now the Majors clear the zone as it rolls slowly into the Barry zone with 5.28 remaining in period number one. Majors changing on the fly. Andre Lacos lead pass intercepted by Rasmussen who will fire it back into Barry territory. First career OHL meeting between the Lacos brothers tonight. Andre Lacos for the Barry Colts and Philip Lacos with the St. Michael's Majors both playing a defense. Andre with the Majors last year traded to Barry in the offseason and Philip Lacos coincidentally joining the Majors this year. Another Lacos in the lineup. Here's Nistis with a steal. Quick shot and Brian Finley will make the save. With the score, Barry won. St. Michael's nothing. This is Majors hockey. Thanks very much, guys. Coming up in our first intermission, we'll talk to Daniel Kachuk, the Mississauga native, a first-round pick of the NHL's Calgary Flames back in 1997. Definitely one of the uh, bright lights on the Barry Colts. They have another, another, uh, a number of NHL draftee, uh, draftees in their lineup. Daniel Kachuk coming up. We'll also have some news from around the league and a first-period analysis from Tim and Glenn upstairs. Jerry Connell with the only goal of the period so far. It's the Majors trailing the Barry Colts by a score of 1-0. Connell, a rookie with the Barry Colts, scoring his first OHL goal from Cameron and Hill. It's 1-0 for the Barry Colts, uh, leading the St. Michael's Majors. Now we'll take a look at what's coming up next on CTV Sportsnet. The Sioux taking on the Brampton Battalion, recently picking up their first victory of the season. That's coming up Sunday at 7 p.m. Catch it on CTV Sportsnet. Should be quite a good matchup. Uh, the Brampton Battalion looking good this year with a fine young rookie, 15-year-old Jason Spezza in their lineup. We'll have a feature on him in our second intermission. Now we go back upstairs live to Tim and Glenn. Glenn, looking forward to that second intermission, um, the, the analysis with you and I, I'm sure that will be very profound. <laughs> also on that first intermission, but Daniel Kachuk, all kidding aside, uh, Daniel Kachuk, great story, Mississauga kid, uh, high draft pick, uh, drafted first overall in the OHL draft in 1995, fourth year of the Barry Colts. Calgary Flames uh, expecting big things from this guy when he turns pro next year. Uh, it's amazing what uh, how much confidence you have when you come back from an NHL camp such as uh, Kachuk has, has done, and uh, you play with an air of confidence, and and believe it or not, it rubs off on the other on the other guys in the team. In the meantime, the Calgary Flames hoping Daniel Kachuk can lead the Barry Colts to a Memorial Cup this year. They certainly have the talent to be considered for that very prestigious trophy. Here's Parfrey at the point. Parfrey to the net. A dangerous uh, pass shot by Kevin Parfrey, the rookie, as he put it towards the net in traffic. And the Major is fortunate that that one didn't find the net. Mark Popovic will start it out at center. Here's Mark Popovic. We're seeing a little more of what he can do. He's had that hand heavily taped for quite some time. Injured wrist, slow adjustment. The Ontario Hockey League having to fight through that wrist injury. But we saw him play in the preseason, and he is a sight to behold. A smooth skater, and he's, he's not afraid to take uh, to take matters into his own hands when it comes to playing the puck up with the offensive, uh, in the offensive zone. We just saw him there going towards the net and looking for that uh, that cross ice pass. Not a lot of defensemen have the confidence to do that at this level. Daryl Bootlin, the first round draft pick of the Barry Colts, one of several very talented rookies in the Colts lineup. They had a very good draft. Denny Schmidtke from the uh, import side, Daryl Bootlin, Scott Cameron, all having very good years for the Barry Colts. Ed Hill, another good find on defense as well, playing very regularly. So not only a lot of veteran talent in the Colts lineup this year, but some good solid rookies infused into the roster, which bodes well for future years. Connell from Scott Cameron and Ed Hill, all rookies, providing the only goal of the game at 8:39. Connell's first OHL goal. 4:06, the time remaining in the first period. The Majors trailing the Colts 1-0 as the Majors roll it into Barry territory. Icing has been signaled, but Kenny Karub got to it first, so the Majors catch a break. Jason Cannon working along the boards, leaves it for Brian Simpson. Simpson finds Karub back in the net. 
group with some moves. Down he goes as Martin Skula gets a piece of him. Skula checking well back of the net, takes Karup out of the play. Cannon into help. Now Jeff Tetzlaff will skate it out right wing for the Colts. Tetzlaff working to the blue line, trying to bring it around. Hines hit alone and got the shot off as Jeff Tetzlaff managed to find some room around Mark Hines. Great strength to uh, fight off the defense, but on that play. Good hustle by Jeff Tetzlaff as Hines wasn't able to uh, quite get an angle on him. You don't see uh, Hines beat like that very often. Good, solid veteran defenseman Mark Hines, a 19-year-old. Played for the Erie Otters last year. Lead pass at center for Daniel Kachuk. Stops. Left wing. Looking for the rookie, number six, Fraser Clare. Whistled down on the offside as Clare got in ahead. Fraser Clare, speaking of rookies with the Barry Colts this year. North York Metroway player from Unionville, as we were discussing earlier, and he's getting uh, some quality ice this evening. Playing with Kachuk and Schmidtke on, you could say, the number one line for the Barry Colts, simply by virtue of the presence of Danny Kachuk and their leading scorer, Danny Schmidtke. Fraser Clare again uh, from Unionville, Ontario, just up the road, and uh, another Toronto native. 2.58 remaining in the first period. Majors on the dump in. Ed Hill, right wing. And Schmidtke will push it ahead. Schmidtke gives chase. Kachuk takes it, but again, the Barry Colts called on the offside. So looking forward to the interview with Daniel Kachuk in the first intermission with Mike DeJong. Seven NHL draft picks in this Barry Colts lineup. Daniel Kachuk, the highest drafted of them all, sixth overall by the Calgary Flames in the 1997 draft. And Martin Skula and Michael Hendrick going in the first round this year. Sean Cation, lead pass from Mike Jefferson. Jefferson right wing for Sheldon Keefe. Here's Barnes stood up at the line by big number 26, Chris File. Keefe keeps it in. Jefferson ahead to Keefe. Pass behind Keefe. Cation reaches in. Cation tries to keep it into the line. And now the Barry Colts will skate it to the line. And again, Barry caught on that offside. A little anxious getting over that blue line to uh, get in on Corey Batten. As we discussed, several NHL draft picks of the Barry Colts. Henrik Skula, the first rounders. Adam DeLue not dressed tonight. Sixth round pick of the Red Wings. Daniel Kachuk. Nick Smith, third round pick. Couple of Florida Panthers. Keith Mullaney. And big Chris File on the defense. Ninth round pick of the Chicago Blackhawks. Majors with a one NHL pick address this evening. Ryan Barnes and Mike Laceby would be the other, both Red Wings picks, but Laceby has been out all season after banging up his knee in a collision with Joey Koser, of all people, the Red Wings camp this year. Play carries into the Barry Colt zone. Henrik will try and skate it out the right wing. Ryan Walsh got in his way. Now the Colts work it out left wing. Daniel Kachuk to the line. And again, I was going to say, Kachuk managed to avoid the offside this time. Actually, it was Keith Delaney taking it over the line, but uh, what's that, four offsides in a row? Or for Barry as they try to work it over the line? Well, I'm sure St. Mike's isn't having a problem with that, but I know Bert Templeton's telling these guys, come on, guys, let's get on that. Let's, uh, let's get our timing down a little bit better, and uh, we know what we got to do here tonight. George Nista skates to the St. Michael's bench. Rock Boucher, the former Barry Colt, acquired in the offseason, one of two former Colts in the majors lineup. Both Boucher and Jason Penizzato played for the Barry Colts last year. As we mentioned, Andre Lacos, former major in the Colts lineup. Colts control the draw. Here's Andre Lacos taking it to the line. I think they're okay there. Got it in, no offside. Colts give chase. They tried the dump in that time. They were getting burned on the skate-ins at the line. 135 remaining in the first period. Play back of the Majors net. Puck along the boards, four of them jamming at it. And now they get the whistle. Good work by Kenny Karup along the boards, although the Majors, I don't think we're trying to force a face-off in their own zone. But Keith Delaney will be happy. Forcing the face off, and he will step in against the number one line again. Barnes, Keith, and Jefferson. 
So Mike Jefferson will take this draw for the majors. Mike Jefferson, Sheldon Keith, Ryan Barnes, all played for David Frost, Quinny Hawks two years ago. Barnes and Keefe came up with David Frost with the Toronto Young Nats program. Keefe and Jefferson, I should say. Barnes joined them in Quinney. Sean Cation played with these guys a long time as well. They all played for the Quinney Hawks along with goalie Corey Batten. Five members of that Quinney Hawks 1996-97 team with the majors this year as Hendrick brings it back on the offside. So the Colts back to their difficulties getting over the line. Very Colts, I see, sporting the blue mouth guards this year. The majors partial to the yellow ones. Uh, that's an OHL rule this year. Colored mouth guards, so the officials can verify that the players are indeed wearing the mouth guards. Also makes it a lot easier to pick them up if they fall out of your mouth too, Tim. Yeah, you can find them. You don't, you don't end up skating over them. <laughs> okay. And if you have them different colors, at least you know which one's yours if they both fall out. Just don't <laughs> want to be dropping the, the blue mouth guards on the blue line. That's right. Puck fired into the Toronto zone. Corey Batten unable to control it. Back of the net. Majors try to bring it out in the left wing. Good work by the Barry Colts keeping it in. Cation turns. Finds Chris Cava. Cava left wing for Barnes. One minute to play in the first period. Mike Jefferson ahead for Ryan Barnes. Reaches for it. Nick Smith shoots but knocked down in front by Chris Cava. Down goes Cava. Caught a stick in the face from Mike Christian as Cava went down very quickly and Looked like the Barry Colts player got the stick high. Yeah, and referee Al Kimmel didn't miss that one. Mike Christian shaking his head as he makes his way to the penalty box. Careless use of the stick. You got to be so careful these days. I mean, the players move so fast that uh, if you're not careful where you're putting that stick, if it's in the air, if it's, if it's coming off the ice, um, Definitely have to uh, watch your stick, uh, and, and uh, you know, rightly so. Here we see Chris Cava coming over to the boards. Christian just trying to get some leverage on Cava and get the stick right up there underneath the visor, and that's a very dangerous spot to have that stick contacting uh, the player's face. Uh, there's not a whole lot to, you can do about it as a player. Once that stick's in between your visor and your eyes, you just got to sort of hope for the best, and uh, uh, Chris got off with his own, uh, his own efforts, and uh, I'm sure he'll be back out for the next shift. Somewhat lucky to only incur two minutes. Two minutes for high sticking, but very careless use of the stick. And Christian knew it, shaking his head at the bench, uh, at the penalty box, and clearly uh, shaking his head at his at his own uh, carelessness, as there's no doubt that that was a penalty. And we all know how good the power play is for uh, for the St. Michael's Majors, uh, third in the league this year. Here we go. We finally get a look at this St. Michael's Majors power play late in the first period. 30 seconds remaining in the period as the Barry Colts quickly break up the major rush. Jason Cannon will start it out. Cannon and Popovic on the defense with the 23 some up front as Keith brings it over the line looking for Mike Jefferson. Jefferson banging with Martin Skula. Jefferson finds Cannon. Cannon to the net. Cannon wrist shot and Finley put the blocker on that as Cannon was able to skate it very close. Oh, lots of time on that one. Popovic brings it in from the right point. As time expires here in the first period, players bumping in the corners. Some after the whistle rough stuff as time has expired here in the first period. Now they break that up with the score. The Barry Colts won. And the St. Michael's Majors, no score. Let's go downstairs to Mike DeJean. Thanks very much, guys. Well, the Major is just not able to get the equalizer there at the end of the first period. They trail the Barry Colts, their new Central Division rivals, 1-0 after 20 minutes of play. Coming up in our interview, our intermission interview will be with Colts captain Daniel Kachuk. We'll be back on St. Michael's Majors Hockey after this. back to Maple Leaf Gardens. The Barry Colts leading the Toronto St. Michael's Majors 1-0 after 20 minutes of play. Joining us now is the Barry Colts captain Daniel Kachuk, a first round draft pick of the NHL's Calgary Flames back in 1997. Daniel, thanks for coming on. Tell us about uh, your season so far in junior. Well, it's, uh, it's, I've only been here for a couple of weeks now, but uh, we're doing really well. Uh, we're first in our division right now. We've got a very quick club. Our young rookies are contributing and the veterans are doing their job. 
Daniel, can you tell us what you learned uh, going to camp with the Calgary Flames, not only this year, but also last year as well? Well, I think what I learned is how much further I need to go. Uh, it's obviously, the speed barrier, that's, uh, that's a big key to make the next level, strength and conditioning. But up there, you got to read and react a lot quicker than you do in this game. And everything's just done to that degree of intensity more. And uh, I have to improve on all those things. I guess uh, playing for a Sutter, too, you've, you've got to sort of work on the tough, toughness angle uh, to get back up there and get into that lineup. Well, Brian Sutter, he's a hard-nosed kind of character. And uh, the good thing is I have a hard-nosed coach here in Barrie, too. So it's going to be a good thing if Brian Sutter stays in Calgary. Hopefully, I can work my way up. And he's a pretty straightforward guy. And you just got to go work hard and uh, give it all you got. Tell us about some of the other uh, NHL draftees and some of the other players you, you have on the Barry Colts. So you have Michael Henrik, obviously, a, you know, a great hockey player. And uh, in school there on the defense, helps the power play. <laughs> well, we got a lot of skill. I think if you look at it, uh, Henny's got a lot of speed going to the outside. He's got a tremendous shot. And I don't think anybody comes out of their own zone better than uh, school in the league. And uh, we're looking at we got two, two more surefire first rounders in, in our lineup with uh, Shvicky and Finley. And uh, we got other guys that are, that are going to be, I think, in the top half of the draft, at least anyway. Great. That's Daniel Kachuk, the captain of the Barry Colts, joining us here from St. Michael's, uh, from Maple Leaf Gardens, almost said St. Michael's Arena. The St. Michael's Major is trailing the Barry Colts 1 0 after one period of play. He's trying to get Katsaris down the wing. Here's Terzo breaking it around, puts it to Katsaris. He scores! That drops it off and back to the net for Glock. He falls on the play, gets it away to Mayu. He scores! He finds McMillan down the left wing, breaking it alone. Look for Shadow, going to the score! Belleville wins the draw. Lawmaster with the shot, they score! Here's Nita from the point. The rebound, they score! Stevens, pass in the circle. Here's Katzer, backhand, he scores! Here's Zorin now coming on a breakaway the other way. Steve Zorin shoots, he scores! it off to the far side. Centering pass to Robichaud, he scores! Piccolacci, up top, Cannon with the big score! Majors win! Majors win! And our next game coming up on Rogers Community Television, the St. Michael's Majors hosting the a Kitchener Ranger Sunday afternoon, 1.30 face-off here at Maple Leaf Gardens. Well, some news from around the OHL now. Despite an undefeated start, the Ottawa 67s, believe it or not, have dropped to second in the overall CHL rankings. The 8-0-2-67s are now behind the 14-1 Halifax Mooseheads of the Quebec League. Halifax is just red hot to start the season. As are the Plymouth Whalers, 9-1 on the year. They're ranked fourth in the Canadian Hockey League, while the Guelph Storm, who we saw here at Maple Leaf Gardens last Sunday, are sixth out of the top ten in Canadian Major Junior Hockey. 15-year-old Jason Spezza of the Brampton Battalion is really lighting up the OHL in his rookie season. The underager has three goals and nine points in just seven games with the Battalion this year. He scored the winning goal in the Brampton Battalion's first and only victory so far in their expansion season. And the funny thing is, Spezza will probably be lost to the expansion team in the, in the uh, entry draft next season unless the Brampton Battalion can finish 20th out of the 20 teams in the league. Former Kingston Frontenac defenseman Chris Allen is now in the American Hockey League, and he's with a team called the Beast of New Haven. He leads all blue liners in the league, in fact, in points. Allen has n had 95 points last season with the Frontenac, so there's a guy you might want to watch as a future NHLer, Chris Allen now playing with the Beast of New Haven in the American Hockey League. Taking a look at the, the standings in the OHL after four weeks, it's the Barry Colts right here at Maple Leaf Gardens in first place in the Central Division with six wins in nine games. North Bay Centennials are next with only three wins in ten games, and there's the St. Michael's Majors within striking distance of the North Bay Centennials, uh, Sudbury and Mississauga. 0-9-0 in its first nine games. The Ottawa 67s, as we told you, 8-0-2, 18 points, followed by Peterborough four points back. Uh, a two-way tie for third spot between the Oshawa Generals and the Belleville Bulls. Kingston bringing up the basement in the East Division. 
Next, it's the West Division featuring those Plymouth Whalers. David Legwand and company, 18 points. The class of the league along with Ottawa right now. London trying to keep pace uh, far back with five wins in 11 games. Uh, 10 points, eight back of Plymouth already. Yikes. Sarnia Sting and Sault Ste. Marie tied at eight points apiece, followed by the Windsor Spitfires in last place with only five. In our final division, the Midwest Division, the Guelph Storm, 16 points. It's Owen Sound next, followed by Erie, the Kitchener Rangers, who, as mentioned, will be here at the Gardens on Sunday, and the Brampton Battalion with one win in their first seven games. Tonight's games on the OHL out of town. Scoreboard North Bay and Sault Ste. Marie scoreless in the first. In fact, all of these games are scoreless in the first. The Ice Dogs and Windsor and the Plymouth Whalers and the Peterborough Peach scoreless in the first period. The St. Michael's Majors trailing the Barry Colts 1-0 here at Maple Leaf Gardens after one period of play. We'll be back on St. Mike's Majors Hockey after this. Welcome back to Historic Maple Leaf Gardens. The Barry Colts leading the Toronto St. Mike's Majors 1-0 after one period of play. Now we go upstairs to our play-by-play -play team of Tim Haffey and Glenn Lowe's for some first period analysis. Gentlemen. Thanks, Mike. 1-0 the score. Barry leading Toronto. 17-11 uh, to 11 the shots on goal in favor of the Barry Colts. A very efficient period, I thought, by the Barry Colts. They managed the, the one goal, and they took advantage of, uh, I guess you could say, some aggressiveness on the part of the St. Michael's Majors. It didn't quite work out for them. Well, abso absolutely. The uh, uh, Barry Colts, first, this is the first game of Maple Leaf Gardens that, uh, that Toronto's actually been outshot at the first period level, and uh, uh, as you said, uh, we're ready to go with the, uh, with the recap on the goal. Uh, here we see a pinch in here. Uh, I think that's Pinizzato there that gets uh, dumped there at the blue line. And uh, as a result, loses, loses the puck. And off go uh, a couple of Barry Colts coming behind the net. Push the puck in. And as you, saw, as you see right here, the, uh, the puck is let up. And uh, number two, Hines, pinches in and gets a little caught with the Barry player. And there's a two-on-one break. Uh, well played here by number 19. Scott Cameron. Yeah, Scott Cameron. Right wing. He crosses it. A beautiful crossover. And uh, our friend Mr. Connell is there to, to tap it. And uh, Batten isn't there to get it, and neither is uh, neither is the defenseman. So uh, that's the uh, that's the story here. It's one nothing, and uh, and uh, well, you know the uh, the St. Mike's Bears got to be a little more careful if they're going to pinch in from time to time. Well, they're they're working hard trying to force the the play, but they they did get burned. And, and the Barry Colts, as we saw, the two rookies uh, just very dangerous on the breakout and a, a pinpoint pass by Scott Cameron. Nice job by Jerry Connell, the rookie driving the net for his first OHL goal. So that is the only goal of the game. Barry leading Toronto 1-0. We'll go back downstairs to Mike DeJong. And thanks, guys. As mentioned, the Barry Colts out shooting St. Michael 17-10 in that first period. Coming up on Rogers Community Television, we have the OHL this week. Check out that program for the latest news, interviews, game highlights, and profiles from around the league. It's a great show. Keep up to date with all of the great players in this league. Fridays at 10.30 p.m. Also, you can catch the show Sundays after our St. Michael's broadcast here on Rogers Community Television. St. Michael's trying to get back into it in the second period, trailing the Barry Colts 1-0 in a key Central Division matchup. We'll be back with second period action after this. You're watching St. Michael's Major. Welcome back to Maple Leaf Gardens. We now go live upstairs to Tim and Glenn for the second period, guys. Thanks, Mike. one nothing to score. The Colts leading the Majors. The Majors will open the second period on the power play. 113 remaining in the St. Michael's Majors power play as number 28 Michael Christian is in the penalty box, continuing to serve his penalty for high sticking. Sheldon Keefe on the ice for the Majors, tied in power play points in the OHL with Owen Sounds, Mike Domkowitz, and Mike Jefferson in the top five as well with nine power play points. Keefe has 11, and Sean Cation ranks in the top ten as well for the Majors. All three, as you might imagine, on the ice for the Majors as Nick Smith breaks it up for the Barry Colts, and the Colts send it down the ice. And that was one of the themes of our opening, Glenn. The, the Majors power play rank third in the Ontario Hockey League. Keith Jefferson, and Cation all in the top ten in OHL power play point scores this year with Keith sharing the lead with Domkowitz with Owen Sound. Very dangerous power play, and uh, 
Uh, any team that knows what they're doing are going to be very conservative on the penalty killing unit uh, to ensure that uh, they do everything they can to stop this, these, these three guys. The power play not terribly dangerous this time around. Only 15 seconds remaining in the power play opportunity as St. Michael's having no luck whatsoever getting it set up. Ryan Barnes takes it to the line. Barnes, Cannon, let's fly, and Cannon well wide on the far side. Two seconds remaining in the manpower advantage, and the penalty is over, so the Majors 0 for 1 on the power play this evening. A virtual penalty free game. Christian's high sticking minor, the only penalty of the game so far. Now the Barry Colts back at full strength. Mark Popovic turns in his own zone. Mark Popovic. Now here's a look at Mark Popovic, the smooth skating defenseman. This is the Popovic we are expecting to see more of as he leads the rush and single-handedly brings it into the Barry zone. Now the Colts clear the zone. Popovic not quite able to contain it at the blue line. Popovic very smartly ahead to Brian Simpson. Simpson gets it back. Now Simpson's pass doesn't work as Kenny Karup had come back on the play. And the Colts fire it out to center. Turning is Schvidke. Schvidke lead pass, backhand shot, and Corey Batten makes the save on the rookie, number six, Fraser Clare. Kept in by Ed Hill, shot right on, and Corey Batten will take it in the chest. Another couple of shots Corey Batten's had to face uh, early on in this second period, and uh, St. Mice has uh, got, they have the, uh, the, the ability to take lots of shots, which has been their fundamental philosophy since the start of this season, is to shoot more and create more chances. But we haven't seen that yet. And uh, I know Mark Napier is telling them, guys, just relax, get down on the other end, and move the puck around as like you know how, and uh, get the shots in this goaltender. Let's see if we can pop one by him. Face off to the right of Corey Batten, the former Quinny Hawk, one of five former Quinny Hawks in the majors will line up. As the Colts control the draw, and Martin Skula lets fly from the left point. Bouncing puck, left wing. Michael Hendrick hustles over. Hendrick battling along the boards. Now the Majors clear the zone. That's the new guy, Brent Mulder. Mulder on the ice here early in the second period. Hendrick trying to drag it around Hines and nearly put it past Corey Batten on the far side. Nice work by Michael Hendrick. He's got that great reach, a, a classic power forward. Good with the puck as well. Drafted 13th overall by the Edmonton Oilers this year. Hendrick again. Finds Skula at the point. Skula for Lacos. Winds up. Shot right on. Batten the save. And quickly, Henrik on the rebound. Henrik centering attempt intercepted by Walsh as Walsh throws it left wing for Brent Mulder. Mulder bumping with Lacos. Puck back of the Barry net. Martin Skula hustles after it. Skula's got some jump in this second period. Skula's dumping. Knocked down by Sean Cation. Cation takes the big hit from Daryl Bootland. But the Majors take it in. Quick shot right wing by Ryan Barnes. Quick snapshot handled by Brian Finley. Jefferson back of the net. Puck along the boards. Keefe hustles over. Keefe finds Jefferson low. Keefe knocked down but bounces right back up. There's the big guy Ryan Barnes back of the net. Leaves it for Jefferson. Now Sheldon Keefe. Sheldon Keefe in front. Barnes contained on the play and Barnes knocked down by Andre Lacos. The Colts mean business in their own zone. Cation lets go as that shot deflected by number 15, Connell. Connell deflecting it wide. Now the Majors still with control. Shot right to the net. Rolls for the crease into the near corner. Sean Cation follows up. Cation bumped off the puck. Barnes keeps it into the line. Now the Colts will hustle it out, but uh, good puck control by the Majors in the Colts zone. Very good. Good sustained pressure. As the Quinty line heads to the boards. And the Colts skate it out. Long bouncing dump in into Toronto territory. Chris Cavill will touch on the icing with 15-42. The time remaining in the second period. Barry continues to lead 1-0. The Toronto, the Toronto St. Michael's Majors here have to continue to press these Barry Colts in their end to create the, the, uh, the shots opportunity and, and in doing so will hopefully create some goals. There we see Sheldon Keefe. We've been talking about him for the good part of the evening. 21 points already off to a great start. Jefferson served a, a couple games suspension, Tim, and he's, he's down to 12 points. Uh, and uh, Sean Cation, uh, another rookie, uh, adding, adding to the list with Keith as another big goal, goal scorer. Well, we see four majors, the top four, scoring at a better than a point a game clip. The three Quinny kids, Keith Jefferson and Cation, and Brock Boucher at a point a game pace as well. 
Andre Lacos or Philip Lacos I should say keeps it in for the majors Philip Lacos number 11 wearing his brother Andre's former number with the majors Andre effectively leaving the jersey behind for younger brother as he made the trip north to Barry for this season Andre Lacos was at the Nashville Predators training camp this offseason with a former teammate Booyah Ramadovsky was currently playing for the Louisiana Ice Skaters in the East Coast Hockey League. We'll continue to monitor We Are Amadovsky's professional development for you. I'm sure he's enjoying the warm weather. Play whistled down in the very zone, and Chris File has dropped the gloves, and File pounding on the major player who went down. Now that fight is broken up as we try and determine who the Toronto player is. Uh, running with a goaltender and the Barry uh, Colts player, rightly so. Didn't uh, didn't appreciate it too much. Big Chris File taking exception to Jason Cannon as Cannon collects himself and Cannon going to the net paid the price but good hustle by Jason Cannon but File did what you'd expect in that situation. File a ninth round selection of the Chicago Blackhawks. And Jason Cannon goes to the penalty box as well. File just kind of jumped him. Cannon really didn't get a, a chance to get set. So we, we won't consider that a, a victory for uh, Chris File in terms of uh, our scoring of the oh, fight. I don't, I don't so, think you can consider that a no, fight. No, so, no. Uh, well, well, certainly not a victory involved. <laughs> One-sided fight that File did throw a couple of punches, but yeah. Cannon really uh, didn't have an opportunity to uh, properly prepare himself. Very rare does a St. Michael's major lose a fight. In fact, I'm not sure it's ever happened. <laughs> we may be guilty of selective memory there, but they certainly win more than their fair share. That's for sure. Fair share. So a couple penalties offset, uh, offset each other, and uh, still got a five-on-five -five game. Sheldon Keefe. Keefe for the long shot. Knocked down by Lacos. Lacos for Skula. Andre Lacos has prepared with Martin Skula virtually all season for the Barry Colts. As icing called against the Barry Colts. So offsetting minor penalties, goaltender interference against Jason Cannon, and Chris File with the follow up roughing at time of the penalties, 5 14 03 was remaining on the clock. So time of the penalties would be 5 07. Yeah. Good luck there at uh, Sean Cation. Uh, again, we mentioned that he's one of the top scorers for the majors this year. and. Uh, having a great season. Face off to the left of Brian Finley in the Barry zone. 14-28 remaining here in the second period at Maple Leaf Gardens. Interesting, Daniel Kachuk in the first intermission designated Denny Schwitke and Brian Finley as uh, surefire NHL first-round draft picks this year, and he should know. Well, he's been to the camps, and he's played with his team. Well, Schwitke, uh, another great import that the Barry Colts have had success with. Uh, the Barry Colts have had as much success with, as any team in the Ontario Hockey League with their import draft selections. They've taken advantage of the full quota. Both uh, Martin Skula and Denny Schwidke would qualify as imports as play whistle down in the Toronto zone. Uh, Jan Boulis had some big years with his Barry Colts team as well. Alexander Volchkov had some success with the Colts. So Bert Templeton in the Folks of the Barry Colts know how to maximize that CHL import draft. Absolutely. And uh, Barry, you know, we all know Barry's a great hockey community, and, and uh, uh, they've had a good following up there at the Molson Center. And uh, I know that St. Mike's is looking forward to getting up there to play them as well. Look at the backup goaltender for the Barry Colts, number 29, Ben Vanderklok. Face off to the left of Brian Finley. The Colts with two 17-year-old goaltenders. But Finley, a sophomore, he was a sensation as an underager last year in the Barry Colts net. Parfrey moves it into Toronto territory. Kevin Parfrey, the rookie defenseman. As the Majors take it deep into Barry territory, puck back of the net. Brock Boucher hustles after it. Boucher looking for his man back of the net. George Nistis is on the ice. Ryan Walsh out there as well. And Al Delaney brings it to the line for Barry. Delaney, the quick wrist shot wide as the puck carries along the near boards. Tim Verbeek working along the boards along with number 27, Michael Henrik, as the Majors send it deep into Barry territory, and Ed Hill is back for it. 
Ed Hill, long lead pass at center, doesn't work. Corey Batten out of the net, and Batten will leave it for Mark Hines. Mark Hines, right wing for Ryan Walsh. Walsh takes the hit from Verbeek. Puck carries to the Berry line. George Nistis deep. Boucher keeps it into the line. Now Rasmussen reaching for it. Play whistle down to the offside with the Colts leading the St. Michael's Majors 1 2 0. Long pass over to the left side for Galachi. He drills a shot that goes right off of Seamus Connick's helmet. Bell with the 2 on 1. Tootin with the shot. And Amadovsky makes the save and covers up. Puts it, puts it off to Galbraith. Takes a shot. Two rebounds. Amadovsky. Now Murphy will send a long lead pass for Zork. He's got a breakaway and shoots. Oh, they call it offside. Zork intercepted the pass at center. Shot by Schultz. The save by Kodak. Oh, Toronto wins it as Lacos is working the puck. Takes a shot. A glorious save there by Kodak. And he has McMillan and Zork to work with on a 3 on 2. McMillan with the drive. The line. As Jacobs crosses only into Toronto territory. Jacobs with the rip shot. Zork will think about taking it up. Puts it up to the side. Great save by Kotick as Jefferson was waiting there to deposit the puck in the net. Brian Campbell lead pass down the middle. Here's Gustafson with a shot and a great plus save there. Oh, we're going to want to see the replay on that. Approaching the midway point of this evening's hockey game, 12.59 remaining in the second period. The Colts leading the Majors 1-0. Majors again looking for their first win at home this year, 0-4-2 at Maple Leaf Gardens. Coming off back-to-back -back one goal losses to Guelph and Kingston. Two good teams here at the Gardens and a couple of ties before that. Martin Skula carries it deep into Toronto territory. Skula back of the net. As Skula goes down, and Brian Simpson will bank it to the line, gloved down and kept in by Andre Lakos. Lakos fires it back of the net. Younger brother Philip hustles it left wing. Kept in by the Colts as Andre Lakos pitched in, and Connell rubs out his man Popovic in the corner. Good hustle by Connell. The game's goal score number 15, Jerry Connell, the rookie for the Barry Colts. As Pinizzato, the former Colts, squeezed into the boards by former teammate Martin Skula. Majors center it, but Andre Lacos is there, and Lacos will bank it off the boards and out. Daryl Bootland takes the hit from Kenny Karoop. Now Bootland further punished by Brian Simpson as Simpson and Karoop go to the bench. Very pleased with their physical effort. Majors take it right wing. Pinizzato trying to drag it by Christian. Christian holds his ground. Bootland works it loose. The Majors take it. Here's a steal. Nick Smith. Nick Smith to the net. Smith the Deacon. Save Batten. Rebound. I can't believe that didn't go in as Mike Christian trailing on the play. Looked like he put it past Corey Batten. You know, the, uh, the St. Mike's Majors have to get out of their end a lot smoother than they have been. Good work by the Barry Colts at the blue line, forcing the turnover as both Smith and Mike Christian had excellent scoring opportunities. Huge effort by Corey Batten. Ryan Barnes working deep. Barnes with Keefe. Look at the way Keefe goes down low, trying to finesse it to the net. Keefe is hauled down. No penalty on the play. The crowd here wants a penalty. As Christian, left wing, shot, rebound, big fat rebound. They score. Trailing on the play was Jeff Tetzlaff, and the Barry Colts go up 2 0. Well, big rebound indeed. Uh, missed by the first player, connected by the second. Jeff Tetzlaff, the trailer on the play, completely uncovered in alone as the Barry Colts. Pounce on that opportunity. You see Nick Smith coming in. Christian with him on the side. Cava commits himself to the defenseman. Takes him out of the play, which he does a good job of. And the third man should be the uh, should be the high the high trailing forward who didn't get back in time to cover our friend uh, who scored the second goal for the Barry Colts. Tetzlaff. Jeff Tetzlaff. Well, as you pointed out, Glenn, the defenseman had their men. We saw Calvin Cash in the picture taking their men out of the play, but there was uh, no, no there forward. To pick up the trailer. Yeah, no no forward trailer. trailing on the play, and Tetzlaff that's, completely uncovered. That's the first forward's job when you're getting back into your own end is to cover that trailer. Usually it's the center that comes back deep, but we saw Sheldon Keefe tied up uh, deep in the Barry zone, and just uh, the three of them were caught up ice, and it cost the majors. Barry leading 2 0. 10 44 remaining here in the second period. Jeff Tetzlaff with his second of the year. Mike Christian and Nick Smith drawing the assist. 
Both goals by the Barry Colts coming at even strength. Very patient team, the Barry Colts. A good, solid veteran team with an incredible amount of talent. They wait for the opportunities, and they take advantage. Done so here twice tonight so far. It's the lesser lights, Jerry Connell and Jeff Tetzlaff providing the offense this afternoon. We haven't heard from the big guns, Kachuk and Henrik and Skula. But as we, as we mentioned in our pregame uh, 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 time that we had, every player in this Barry Colts is a threat to, uh, to any team in the league. And, uh, you know, it's, it's shown here tonight with, with two guys that we wouldn't expect to see a lot of scoring power from. Uh, pop two goals in. Face off in the Toronto zone, Daniel Kachuk steps in against Kenny Carew. Boy, that uh, Jimmy Holmstrom is quite up to date with the music playing the new Hole album here at Maple Leaf Gardens. <laughs> I'm surprised you know the name of the band. <laughs> well, I, well, I, I like that band. No, do you? Don't claim to know a lot of the new bands, but, but I did pick up on that one. Oh, good. Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy's Jimmy's right on things. He's uh, he's right uh, right up to date with everything. He's a pretty hip guy, that Jimmy Holmstrom. <laughs> You're going to hear the new and the old here at Maple Leaf Gardens. That's right. Daniel Kachuk will soon be new to the National Hockey League, but old to the Ontario Hockey League in his fourth year of the Barry Colts. His play whistled down at the Toronto Blue Line with 9.57, the time remaining in the second period, as we have indeed reached the midway point of this game. Jason Cannon, the defenseman, turned forward for the St. Michael's Majors this year, one of two overagers in the uh, majors lineup along with Gerald Moriarty and Moriarty and Cannon, the only two remaining majors from the expansion draft. Yeah, Moriarty, uh, his presence will be missed here tonight and uh, uh, we hope we get back, we hope uh, he gets back in the lineup real soon. Majors missing both Gerald Moriarty and Chris Boucher with shoulder injuries uh, this evening. Moriarty's absence, freeing up a spot for Ryan Rasmussen, the rookie defenseman, stepping back into the Toronto lineup this evening. And as we mentioned at the outset, the majors adding big Brent Mulder to the lineup for this evening's game. The second year player played for the Brampton Junior Capitals, 18 years of age. Wasn't quite getting the ice he wanted in Belleville and the Belleville Bulls who, who uh, basically owed the majors a favor. There's a shot by number 26, Pinizzato. Was that Sheldon Keefe? Yes, it was Keefe letting yeah. it go and Finley making the save. But just getting back to Brent Mulder, majors allowed Sammy Katsuras to go to the Belleville Bulls in the offseason and uh, Brent Mulder in a way, not, not strictly speaking, but in a way, uh, a compensation, a uh, return gesture. Uh, Mulder not getting the ice time he wanted in, in Belleville and uh, the Bulls uh, accommodating him and moving him to, to Toronto. He was uh, driven here by Eric Harvey, the Bulls marketing and PR manager, arrived in good time before the game. Well, again, that's uh, it's a great opportunity for, for Mulder here. He'll get some playing time. I know he's happy to be back in, in his community. He's from Brampton, and, uh, you know, he's going to a great school, and uh, I know he's excited to be here this year. Not seeing a lot of ice uh, this evening as he is brand new to the team. Sean Cation gloves it down at center, finds Sheldon Keefe. Let's see what this number one line can do. They've been held off the score sheet. Keefe with a six-game point streak, and Jefferson with a five-game point streak on the line as Keefe takes it along the boards. Looking for Ryan Barnes. Barnes has to come back. Now Barnes with a shot off an ankle. Keith hustles after it. Jefferson in there as well. Puck around to the far boards where Andre Lacos has lots of room. Steps around the head from Ryan Barnes and clears it out. Sean Cation will quickly move it right back. Here's Cation over the line. Cation poke checked as Cation tried to drive that himself. Cation follows up with a hit on Lacos. Left wing for Mike Christian. Play broken up by Brock Boucher. As there's big Mike Guff. On the ice for the Majors. Now Nick Smith leads the Russian center for the Barry Colts. Smith on the flip in. Puck bouncing in the Toronto zone. Chris Cava, right wing for Guff. Guff with Nistis. Mark Napier juggling the lines a little bit, getting Mike Guff into the fray here. Guff working with George Nistis and Brock Boucher. You haven't seen a lot of Guff tonight, but uh, Mark Napier is changing the lines up try to create some sort of a, uh, a mix-up for, for Barry to match, first of all, and, uh, and to get this St. Mike's team on the scoreboard. So Guff uh, stepping up into Ryan Walsh's spot in this line, at least for the time being. Play whistle down in the Toronto zone. Yeah, it looks like Tim Verbeek's going to the penalty box uh, for a hooking penalty. And uh, we're going to see this major's power play and see what it can do uh, at, this, at this juncture. While we were raving earlier about the major's power play, 
led by Sheldon Keefe, Mike Jefferson, Ryan Barnes, Sean Cation, the mainstays in that power play. Now the, the St. Michael's inefficiency on the power play in their one opportunity partially explained by that stat. The Barry Colts 90% in penalty killing, second in the OHL. So you have a very strong power play unit against a very efficient penalty killing unit. Yeah, very, uh, very efficient indeed, Tim. Uh, we've been talking for the most part of the game about the offensive, uh, the offensiveness of Barry and St. Mike's uh, as well. But uh, so far, it's been somewhat of a defensive-minded uh, game, hasn't it? Yes, as Mark Popovic is on the uh, left point for the majors in this power play, as Sean Cation not participating with Jason Cannon on the other point. So Mark Napier has those three options on the point: Cation, Popovic, and Cannon, all very effective. Mark Hines. Excuse me, Sheldon Keefe, Ryan Barnes working deep. Here's Cannon at the point. Now Cannon for Keefe. Keefe hard shot, but he had no room. He fired a wide on the short side. Finley had the angle well covered. Yes, he did. Mike Jefferson, side boards. Here's Jefferson working the half boards. Mike Jefferson, the captain of the majors, playing give and go with his old buddy Sheldon Keefe. Jason Cannon, right point. Cannon quickly fires it back of the net. Keefe leaves it for Jefferson. Keefe and Jefferson both back of the net. Now they switch places. Jefferson for Keefe. These two like to work down low. Now Keefe to the net. Shot just wide on the far side. Watch out when Sheldon Keefe decides to drive the net. Jefferson along the boards. Barnes, Keefe, and Jefferson all working low. Barnes brings it up. Barnes shot. They score. Oh, Ryan that was Barnes. wonderful. Wonderful. Great play by all three, by all five guys on the ice. Well, the Quinny connection strikes again. Keefe, Jefferson, and Ryan Barnes all working low. You know, Tim, you know, Tim, you had mentioned keeping your eye on Sheldon Keefe. Here he is. They got to tie up two guys from Barry most of the time to keep this guy out of the uh, out of the uh, out of the zone. Ryan Barnes fits up the, uh, the loose puck, quick shot, and uh, finds the uh, finds the five hole on Finley. And uh, the majors are happy to be back in this game. It's two to one. Keefe, Barnes, and Jefferson a very tenacious working low. Jefferson and Keefe are like a couple of little bug saws and. They're just relentless in their puck pursuit in the corners, especially on the power play. And Ryan Barnes, uh, no slacker either, and he gathered up that loose puck. And what a uh, what a what a great uh, what a great play by the uh, St. Mike's majors. And you're absolutely right; they are a couple of buzz saws. Uh, they, they they take up a lot of uh, a lot of energy on these Barry Colts, just trying to, to trying to match up with uh, with Jefferson and Keith and keep them busy. 2-1 the score. The Colts leading the majors. The majors on the board, and the three of them: Barnes, Keith, and. Jefferson played for coach David Frost with the Quinney Hawks two years ago. They were a line in Quinney, so the line reunited with the acquisition of Ryan Barnes and the Charlie Stevens deal from the Sudbury Wolves. And uh, I was talking to both Shell and Keith and Mike Jefferson the day of that deal at St. Michael's Arena practice, and they were just beside themselves to have their old friend Ryan Barnes uh, reunited on their line. Well, it's not too often at this level, uh, playing at the OHL, that you get an opportunity to play not only with one, not only but two, but there's three guys uh, that are playing with one another. And then, of course, they've had the advantage of having Corey Batten and uh, Sean Cation playing uh, from in the, in the latter years of, of the Quinney Hawks. We've got five guys that are playing the same team here, and uh, that's just, you don't usually see that. And uh, it makes a lot easier transition and adapting to a new environment. And uh, playing with guys you played with before always helps in developing your own game. And often we see all five on the ice at the same time. Well, Batten in the net, a mainstay, but the other four quite often out there together as well. Chris File keeps it in for the Barry Colts. They continue to lead 2-1 as File puts the shot right on. Batten, another quick save as Batten will cover up with 6-18 remaining in the second period. Here's the scoring. Ryan Barnes, fifth goal of the year. Sheldon Keefe and Mike Jefferson drawing the assist. Major's power play goal at 12-54. So Sheldon Keefe extends his point scoring streak to seven games and Jefferson stretches his to six and Ryan Barnes stretches, uh, he's got a streak going as well. He stretches his to four games. Ryan Barnes in three games with the majors, four games now, including tonight's game, has scored a point in every game since being acquired from Sudbury. Three goals, three assists, six points in four games since coming over. Great stats, Napier's gotta be happy, uh, and Ryan Barnes gotta be happy with his own performance. Now the Majors lost a very good one at Charlie Stevens as we look at Ryan Barnes stepping in to take the face off. Versatile even takes draws too. But Ryan Barnes putting up better than point of game numbers so the Majors not losing anything in terms of production with the loss of Charlie Stevens. On the contrary. Then again Charlie Stevens is, is a pure talent. He is a gifted hockey player and has the potential to put up big numbers in Guelph. Here's Daniel Kachuk right wing off wing shot almost got through Corey Batten. He had to reach back and 
pull that puck back. Oh, you know, uh, Corey Batten, uh, tremendous save on that. And uh, it wasn't until he looked back to see if the puck had got behind him. Here we see. Here we see Cameron coming in, taking the quick shot. Batten's got it, but he looks behind him, and that's when the puck drops out. And uh, good recovery and a good reflex on Corey Batten to ensure the puck stays off uh, beyond that red line. Corey Batten's seen a lot of rubber this afternoon, this evening rather, 26 to 15, the shots on goal in favor of the Colts. And we're still looking at almost six minutes remaining in the second period. Barry Colts with a 2-1 lead. They will be tough to come back on. Chris Cava, left wing. Cava. Long lead pass for Akeef. Keith gets to a quick backhand shot, and Brian Finley the save. I did not think Sheldon Keith was going to generate an opportunity out of that play. He was well covered on the play, but it, just very patient. It's like he's got an extra sensor to know where that puck is. Just waited until he had an angle with the backhand shot going. Finley had to be sharp. Very few players would have the, the presence to make that move. Here's Keith bringing it back on the line. Barnes shoots wide on the short side and quickly Keith looking for the rebound. Jefferson keeps it in. Now Barnes low. Barnes ridden into the boards. Barnes and Keith fighting in the corner. Jefferson's in front of the net. The Colts break it out. And here comes Daniel Kachuk to center. Kachuk right wing for Denny Schvidke. Schvidke wrist shot and Corey Batten with a glove save. Beautiful save by Corey Batten. With a score, the Barry Colts two, the Majors one. This is St. Michael's Hockey. Thanks very much, guys. Coming up in our second period intermission, we'll talk to the Majors, Brian Simpson, scoring goals, two goals in his last four games. And we'll also take a look at uh, some news from around the league, including a story on a fine young rookie with the Brampton Battalion, 15-year-old Jason Spezza, who's been lighting up the league, as we told you. Also have some second period analysis coming up in the second intermission. And the Majors' next uh, few games uh, will be... Coming up this weekend, the first game, in fact, will be against the Kitchener Rangers on Sunday. We'll have that game for you right here on Rogers Community Television. And let's take a look at some of the other upcoming games along with that Sunday matchup with the Kitchener Rangers at 1.30. You have Friday, October 23rd. That is tomorrow in Oshawa. Then you have Sunday, November the 1st, back here at Maple Leaf Gardens against Erie and another road game October 30th. A Halloween matchup the day before against Don Cherry's Mississauga Ice Dogs. That one should be, well, it should be scary to use the Halloween, Halloween terminology. Let's go back upstairs to our play-by-play -play team of Tim Haffey and Glenn Lowe's. Well, reminder that Friday, October 30th game, the grand opening of a Hershey Center in Mississauga, the Majors at Ice Dogs. We will have that game for you on the radio voice of the St. Michael's Majors, the Fan 590, live from Mississauga. Glenn Goldup and I will be in Oshawa tomorrow night, live on the Fan for the Majors-Oshawa Generals game. And uh, Glenn Lowe's, you and I will be back here at Maple Leaf Gardens for the Rogers live action with the Kitchener Rangers and the Majors Sunday afternoon. Looking forward to that game. Uh, Bauer sponsoring the uh, sponsoring the event and starts their promotion for Bauer Team of the Game, where uh, you know, young hockey teams under the age of 13 welcome to come down. And uh, as Bauer's tagline is "Leave an impression," that's what uh, that's what we want you to do. Come down, leave an impression here at the Majors game, and. Uh, to even qualify yourself to win a uh, to win a bunch of prizes. So some Bauer type prizes for Sunday's game with the Kitchener Rangers. Absolutely. I wonder if there's some uh, skates in there. Puck back of the Barry Colts net as the Colts throw it out to center with 401 remaining in the second period. Here's Kenny Karub. Kenny Karub shooting and knocked down, knocked off the puck by Michael Henrik at the last second. Karub. Almost getting the dangerous shot off as Keith Delaney lets fly. And Corey Batten will make the save. 3.47 remaining in the second period. 2-1. The Colts leading the majors. Glenn, you've got some exciting news from the Maple Leaf Gardens box office. Well, the Maple Leaf Gardens box office, we're providing an opportunity for uh, a lot of younger groups. Uh, MTHL, uh, OMHA, um, House League Hockey. Uh, get your hockey teams down here. Give us a call at 596-2851 for all the details. We've got ticket prices as low as three dollars, and uh, uh, you know that for, for groups that are over 50 people, uh, five dollars uh, is a starting price ticket for uh, for anybody that wants to walk into the gardens here. 
We've got uh, we've got a great program on. Did Just you say three? How do we get in on the three dollar? Well, if you got if you got a group of fifty people or more, adult kids uh, and the like, come on down. Three bucks a ticket, and uh, we'll get you down here and make some noise down here at, the, at Maple Leaf Gardens and add to the fun. All right, if you get the get the numbers up to fifty, you get a real discount on the tickets. Maple Leaf Gardens, the shrine of hockey, the home of the St. Michael's Majors, and a very affordable opportunity to watch top flight major junior hockey, the future stars of the National Hockey League on display here at, I would uh, say, the, the number one development league, the number one feeder league for the National Hockey League. And this game would attest to that with three NHL first-round draft picks in the lineup for the Barry Colts. And as Daniel Kachuk, one of those three, pointed out the first intermission, he thinks the goalie, Brian Finley, and Danny Schvitke, the fine, young Ukraine rookie, are surefire first-round picks this year as well. Talking to David David Branch earlier today, and he's quite excited about the uh, the uh, the new divisions that have been aligned up to try to take advantage of the uh, of the geographical areas. Uh, you know, the division with Barrie and Toronto and uh, Mississauga, Osh uh, and uh, and uh, and Sudbury, uh, very exciting indeed, and uh, hoping to build some rivalry, some friendly rivalries. And we have uh, we have, as you mentioned, six meetings this year with uh, with all the teams in the division. And, uh, November 21st is going to earmark a big one as Mississauga Ice Dogs come into town uh, here at the Gardens, and uh, I think we're going we're to try to get some uh, personalities down here. We're not going to give anybody any any leeway yet, but uh, we know what we're talking about, don't we, Tim? Well, I was talking to Don Cherry today at the at the Fan he dropped by our studios this afternoon, and he promised to come on our live radio broadcast of the of the Ice Dogs and the and the Majors on opening night at the Hershey Center. So we're certainly looking forward to that. As play whistled down in the neutral zone 250 remaining in the second period the ice dogs and the majors as you pointed out in the same division this year they will meet eight times we will have four of those games here on rogers community television all three games here at maple leaf gardens between the ice dogs and the majors and the very special one on march 4th at the brand new air canada center as the toronto maple leafs kind enough Welcome back to Maple Leaf Gardens. The Barry Colts leading the St. Michael's Majors 3-1 to one after 40 minutes of action. Let's go upstairs to Tim and Glenn for a second period summary. Thanks, Mike. And what we'd like to do is update you on the penalties that occurred at the end of the second period as we look at the crowded penalty boxes. At the 20-minute mark, what do we have here, Troy? We have Tim uh, Verbeek, Mike Christian for roughing, Brent Mulder for roughing at 19.57. Yeah. And we have Brian Simpson and Tim Verbeek off at the 20-minute mark for roughing. So there are four players in the box all off for roughing. And Simpson, yep. Simpson talking in his uh, uh, second period summary, as you saw there, Tetzlaff uh, scoring, Barnes scoring, and uh, Schwitke scoring from Smith and Kachuk. Uh, Kachuk getting his first point. And you were saying about Simpson? No, Simpson there talking in his interview uh, uh, between periods, mentioning about how he, he wants to bring a ruggedness to this uh, to this St. Mike's team and, and, and continue to play the body. and. Part of the strategy is to play the body here uh, as often as possible against Barry Colts in this third period and try to create some opportunities and uh, and uh, get back in this game. Brian Simpson, the major scholastic player of the year last year. As Kava brings it over the line, shot right on, and Brian Finley the save. The majors with a chore ahead of them, trailing the Colts 3-1 early here in the third period at Maple Leaf Gardens. Loose pocket center. Cation moves it over the line. Martin Skula. Left wing, Ed Hill, nice, Andre Lacos rather, nice little pass ahead for Claire. To the majors line, Chris Cava makes a little move, moves it past Jeff Tetzlaff. Tetzlaff, one of the goal scorers in this game, the score of the second goal for the Barry Colts to put them ahead 2-0 early in the second period. Ryan Barnes got one back for the majors on the power play, but Denny Schwitke on the power play for the Barry Colts, restoring the two-goal margin. Playing in the major zone, Chris Cava working it to the line, but not out as Daryl Bootland keeps it in. Bootland looking for his man to the side of the net. Oh, here's a chance in front. They score. Cameron finds Daryl Bootland in from the left point, and the Colts go ahead 4-1. Another defensive breakdown by the majors there. Uh, Mark Hines slowly uh, going off the going off the ice right now. I think he hurt himself in behind the play, and. Uh, here we uh, we catch the the uh, the opportunity. I mean, they had enough time to score three goals in that time frame. There, the uh, great pass from number 19, Scott Cameron, to set up to Bootland, who uh, made no mistake about that. Put it right over the shoulder of Corey Batten, four to one, Barry. Daryl Bootland, first round draft pick of the Barry Colts from Orangeville Junior B. 
from Schaumburg, Ontario. Not a, not a great way for the majors to start out this third period. Scott but, uh, Cameron and Jerry Connell drawing the assists on fellow rookie Bootland's goal. No, but not a great way to start the period. <laughs> not a great way to start the period, but uh, as we've seen time and time again, this, this majors team has the offensive ability to get back in this game quite quickly if they uh, if they so decide to do so. And this Barry Colts team, though, has the defensive ability to shut a team down. As Keith. Sharp angle shot in Brian Finley the save and you talk about offensive ability. There's the majors go to guy Sheldon Keefe. He has quite the challenge ahead of him as to as does his linemate Mike Jefferson as the two of them exchange shoves with a much bigger Barry Colts player number who is that number 15. Jerry Connell. Connell a good size rookie. Yeah, six foot three uh, 205 pounds uh, definitely a good size rookie. We talked about Popovic tonight a bit, uh, uh, Tim, and uh, what a great player he is. Uh, he's, he's just coming into his own now, out with a preseason injury, and uh, again, he's uh, he's adding a lot of a lot of uh, offensive thrust to this uh, St. Mike's team, and he can handle the puck as well as anybody can. And uh, you know, uh, he's going to turn into a good one. He's 15 years of age, and he's got lots of time on his hands. Got a good, got a good look at the uh, the good size rookie Jerry Connell there, number 15, back of the. Very Colts bench, but yes, Mark Popovic, uh, slowly but surely, we're seeing him around in a form as his wrist heals. Shot from the point by Ryan Rasmussen, knocked down in front, Cation at the line, Cation with a wrist shot to the net as Brock Boucher follows up. Now the Colts clear the zone, Daniel Kachuk gives chase, Barry uh, Toronto right back though, here's Brock Boucher to the net, deflection, save, another chance, and Brian Finley denies Jason Penizzato in close. Good heads up play by uh, by the St. Mike's Majors there. Good passing the good passing the puck around and uh, just about bought one. Andre Lakos, right wing. Looking for Denny Schvidke. Schvidke works it deep as George Nistis knocks him off the puck. Nistis outlet pass. Finds Penizzato. Here's Penizzato working one-on-one -on, -one on Skula, written into the boards. Weak shot. Rolls harmlessly wide. Nice job by Martin Skula. Mike Jefferson throws the hit on big number four, Andre Lakos. Now Schvidke roughed up by Sheldon Keefe as Lakos takes it to the Toronto line. Now the Colts hustle it over, but Jason Cannon hustles back. Cannon stripped of the puck, centering Kachuk right on, and Corey Batten makes a save. Well, Darren Ferris, the Agent for seven of the Barry Colts players, including Hotshot down here. Kachuk paid us a visit, the second intermission. Very interested in the feature that we had on Jason Spezza, Ferris and the Bobby York group representing Jason Spezza. And Darren gave us a little bit of a scoop. He said they're looking at uh, IHL offers for Jason Spezza next year. Spezza, Spezza could quite possibly could turn pro at 16 years of age. Now the NHL option wouldn't be available to him until he was 18 years of age. So he'd be looking at two more years in the Ontario Hockey League and almost certainly go number one in the OHL draft next year. And quite likely the Mississauga Ice Dogs or maybe the Brampton Battalion, whatever team finishes in last place or our other candidates for that number one overall pick. We, we shouldn't concede it to the expansion teams yet, but just based on the current standings, that's where it would land. So that's an interesting turn of uh, developments. Watch out for this Jason Spezza kid. We saw the highlights. Uh, the kid can score. He's a natural, 15 years of age, well over six feet. Played for St. Michael's High School last year, as well as his club team. Here's Hendrick over the line. Sh quick screenshot just wide as the Barry Colts continue to attack. So it'll be interesting to see how the Jason Spezza scenario plays out. Wayne Gretzky did not play in this league at 15. He didn't play in the OHL until he was 16 with Sault Ste. Marie. That's right. Then he went on to the WHA. And... Uh, that's a fun there. And Wayne Gretzky turned pro as a 17-year-old with the Indianapolis Racers and the World Hockey Association. So there is a possibility that Spezza could beat him by a year turning pro. Uh, just a possibility, mind you, but the IHL, not, not a major professional league, probably not quite as good a league as the WHA was back then. Martin Skula. Skula throws it in front. Brian Simpson knocked off the puck. Now Chris Cava leaves it for Cannon. Here's Cannon, left wing for Mike Jefferson. Jefferson working along the boards for Brian Simpson. Simpson throws it to center. Here's Keith. Keith to the net. Keith 
being tied up on the play. Great piece of back checking by the young defenseman Rick Hideki for the Barry Colts as he tied up Sheldon Keefe. We haven't heard much from Rick Hideki this evening. One of the young defensemen that coach Bert Templeton worked into the lineup for this evening's game, but he certainly harassed Sheldon Keefe sufficiently to thwart that scoring opportunity. And uh, that's all you need to do to, to tie up uh, some of these players. Once that once the ball gets rolling, especially someone like Sheldon Keefe, and once they uh, once they get moving around, oh, there we go. Yeah, Little loose puck in front is Jeff Tetzlaff burying the loose puck, and the Barry Colts have really cranked it up here in the third period as they go in front by a score of 5-1. Here's the replay. Martin Skula leading the rush to center. Skula on the dump in, and we see the Colts give chase, and they, they just beat the Majors to the puck. Yeah. Beat the Majors to the puck, and uh, um, nobody taking out the man in front. Uh, Mark Popovic there to, to dig at the puck, but uh, as we all know in this league, with the size differential, uh, uh, between players in this at this level, you've got to take the man at every opportunity you get, and that was something Brian Simpson talked about in the interview that he had with Mike DeJong earlier. That they well, have to take the man consistently. Well, a very glaring breakdown in the defensive zone for the St. Michael's Majors. They're now in a huge hole, trailing the Barry Colts 5-1. Michael Christian and Martin Skula drawing the assists on Jeff Tetzlaff's second goal of the game. A gift goal, in a sense, that he was uncovered on the play. You know, one of the things we missed uh, 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 mentioning was uh, two whistles ago, we saw Mark Hines leave the ice. Uh, I believe he was injured on the play that uh, that preceded the goal. And uh, let's hopefully, uh, let's hope that's not nothing too serious, but I saw him favoring one leg, so that could mean something of a, of a knee or, or, a, or an ankle injury. And uh, we'll try to get, uh, keep you up to date on that as, uh, as the game goes on. All right, good eyes there. Glenn as will keep an eye on Mark Hines' status. Jeff Tetzlaff's third goal of the year, second of the game. Daryl Bootland with his sixth goal of the year, putting the Colts in front 4-1 earlier in this third period. The Colts with two goals here in the third period, padding their lead to 5-1. And the Colts have scored three unanswered goals now after St. Michael's got back in the game on the Ryan Barnes power play goal in the second period, cutting the margin to 2-1. But Barry has really cranked it up. 14 minutes remaining in the third period as play whistled down at the blue line. Faceoff coming up. I would think uh, in and around that blue line plan as uh, we wait to see exactly where they position the puck. But this very Colts team along with the Ottawa 67s, the Plymouth Whalers, the Guelph Storm, those are four very obviously strong teams in the Ontario Hockey League this year. And I think in terms of talent, Barry's competitive with any of them. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, interesting enough, not because I'm uh, I'm associated with the St. Mike's Majors, but as we saw the, uh, the leading scorers this year, Sheldon Keefe right up there, and the uh, other scores are from Plymouth and Ottawa. And uh, it was just it was just nice to see that a team that isn't faring so well statistically in the standings is certainly able to uh, uh, provide some statistics on the individual level. And uh, that's a great thing for Sheldon Keefe and uh, leading the rookies by far in addition to that. Colts skated through the crease as the Majors work it to the line. Tim Verbeek with the chance in front. Now Martin Skula turns. Here's Kachuk. Kachuk, sharp angle, wrist shot. That gets cut up in Corey Batten. The uh, Colts uh, player following up on the play put it in the net, but play whistled down. With the score, the Colts five and the Majors one. This is St. Michael's hockey.
Welcome back to Maple Leaf Gardens here in Toronto. Tim Haffey along with Glenn Lowe's. Mike DeJong, our studio host. Troy Ryan keeping track of stats. Barry Colts leading the St. Michael's Majors 5-1 here in the third period. And here's the Colts at the point. Shot to the net. Rolls wide into the near corner as quickly Keith Delaney jumps on it. Delaney working it around back of the net. Delaney under pressure from Brian Simpson. Here's Parfrey at the point. Shot right on. Rebound as Delaney nearly dragged it by Corey Batten. And Kenny Karoop will skate it out. Kenny Karoop with the head fake at the line. Ed Hill would have no part of it. Shot from the right wing. Just wide on the short side by Ryan Walsh. Walsh, Simpson, and Karoop. The line for the St. Michael's Majors. All obtained by the Majors in last year's draft. Second year, 18-year-olds. This is their step-up year in the Ontario Hockey League. Last year was the rookie year. This is the year they step up. Kenny Karoop, back of the net. Kava, second-year player out there as well. Brian Simpson will backhand it over the glass and out of play. Good crowd here this evening for the Majors and the Barry Colts. Glenn, uh, I can't help but think maybe some uh, some fans came down from Barry to watch the, the local team at Maple Leaf Gardens. But good crowd for a Thursday night. Some nice density in the in the golds and the reds. Uh, it is a challenge. Uh, selling junior hockey in downtown Toronto, but I know you and the uh, good folks at Maple Leaf Gardens uh, have some have some marketing schemes up your sleeves. Oh, absolutely. We're uh, we're focusing our uh, our energies on uh, on speaking to uh, and on behalf of uh, many of the hockey teams that are in the community and, and getting them to come down. Getting them to come down would be a uh, would be a real pleasure for us and a great opportunity for them to come down collectively as a team. So you hockey coaches out there and you players, get yourselves together. Give us a call down here at the Gardens and. Uh, We'll get everybody to have a great time. Fraser Clare favoring his left wrist at the Barry Coles bench as we see Corey Batten at the Toronto bench. And Jeff Thompson takes over a net for the Toronto St. Michael's Majors. So Jeff Thompson, we have a goaltending change. Thompson goes through stretches. Uh, we'll take a little break here at Maple Leaf Gardens. The Colts leading the Majors 5-1. Long pass over to the left side for Galachi. He drills a shot. Seamus Connick's helmet, Bell with the two-on-one, Tooten with the shot, and Amadovsky makes the save and covers up. Whitson puts it off to Galbraith, takes it back, the rebound, another great save by Amadovsky. Now Murphy will send a long lead pass for Zork. He's got a breakaway and shoots. Oh, they call it offside. Zork intercepted the pass, a tenor shot by Schultz, the save by Connick. Oh, Toronto wins it as Lacos is working the puck, takes a shot, a glorious save there. McMillan and Zork to work with on a three on two. McMillan with the drive. The line. As Jacobs crosses only into Toronto territory. Jacobs with the rim shot. Zork will think about taking it up. Puts it up to the side. Great save by Connick as Jefferson was waiting there to deposit the puck in the net. Brian Campbell lead pass down the middle. Here's Gustafson with the shot and a great plus save there. Oh, we're going to want to see the replay on that because. Mm. There's Jeff Thompson, 0-2-0. 6.30 goals against average, 851 save percentage. This is his third pinch hit performance of the season. Actually, did make a start. He made the start, uh, made a start one of the road games in, in Kingston. I think Mark Gabriel's just looking for a bit of a uh, bit of a shakeup here. Um, I would be surprised to say that uh, Corey Batten might end up going back into the pipes uh, just to sort of give this team a bit of a uh, a bit of a change and and see if, uh, see if they respond. Well, let me correct that. Jeff Thompson made the start in Belleville last weekend. So making his third appearance of the OHL season. Chris File with the loose puck at center. So Corey Batten faced 36 shots, allowing five goals. Good news for the majors. We saw Mark Hines coming back on the ice. Uh, in the uh, in the whistle break, and I'm sure they're happy to see that he's going to be healthy and back uh, back in this third period. Andre Lacos in the neutral zone flips it into the Toronto zone as Popovic tried to glove it down. Major started on the right side. Sheldon Keith lead pass for Jefferson. Jefferson right wing for Keith. 
Keefe working on Skula. Keefe hustles back of the net, but Skula shoves him off the puck. Keefe still working, though. Cannon shot from the left point. There's the rebound. Barnes firing it through the crease as the Barry Colts now take it at center and bank it off the boards. Quickly, Jason Cannon. Cannon to the red line. Got caught up with Ryan Barnes for a moment. Now Cannon regroups. Cannon fakes offside as play whistled down. Approaching the midway mark of the third period here in Maple Leaf Gardens, 10.55 remaining. Colts continue to lead the majors 5-1. And, well, there's another little goaltending switcheroo as Jeff Thompson returns to the majors bench. Corey Batten is back in. Thompson did not face a shot. Dude, you would have you yeah, thought, I, thought I had uh, I had some sort of a uh, preconceived notion that this was going to happen. You would have thought that I talked to Mark Napier uh, prior to the game and him telling me this is going to happen, but uh, oftentimes you'll see hockey teams making a goaltending change uh, simply to try to, to try to create some, some adversity and, uh, and, and uh, diversity on the on the front lines. Well, let's give credit where credit is due. Jeff Thompson did face a shot, so perfect game for Jeff, one for one. That's right. Corey Batten back in goal for the St. Michael's Majors as the youngster Brent Mulder, the new player, lead pass for Kenny Karoub. Kenny Karoub shot right on. And Brian Finley makes the save. Danny Schvidke takes the hit. Mulder throwing his weight around. Knocks down the hot shot rookie, Danny Schvidke. That's what they got Brent Mulder for, for that physical presence. Second year in the Ontario Hockey League, coming over from the Belleville Bulls in a deal this afternoon. Shot right on as Batten is on his knees, and Batten makes the save on Daniel Kachuk. Dangerous turnover there for the, uh, for the majors, and... Uh... Uh, we've seen it time and time again tonight that uh, you can't afford to make those mistakes with these uh, with these Barry Colts. They'll uh, take advantage of it every time. One of the things I've been impressed with, Tim, tonight is the uh, defensive ability of the Barry Colts. We've talked so much about how great they are in the offense and how much uh, how much how much power they have up front. But uh, I've never I, I, so far this season I haven't seen too many teams that compare with Barry from a defensive point of view in the, in the sense that they they stand up their man, they don't uh, crowd their own uh, their own goal, and uh, they don't make uh, erroneous mistakes by pinching in early uh, when they don't need to. Got a couple of steady veterans back there: Martin School and Chris File and Ed Hill. Uh, look, he looks like a veteran. Andre Lacos, 19 years of age in his final year of eligibility. Uh, Good steady presence on the blue line as well. Michael Henrik with the high dangerous wrist shot off the glass. Colts piling up this lead without goals from the three first rounders. Skula, Henrik, and Daniel Kachuk. Shot of former Maple Leaf Mark Osborne and Gerald Moriarty, the injured majors defenseman. Here in the Reds at Maple Leaf Gardens. Uh, Mark Osborne, assistant coach to Mark Napier. Boy, yeah. Gerald Moriarty can learn a lot about hockey from Mark Osborne. Well, that's for sure. I'm sure they're talking uh, nothing but hockey up there. And I know Gerald's uh, disappointed he's not out there helping his teammates tonight, but uh, let's hope he has a speedy recovery and, and can get back in this lineup and, and uh, do what he does best and, uh, and uh, keep this Majors team happening. Moriarty suffered a bruised right shoulder in the last Majors game versus Guelph on Sunday. Gerald Moriarty in his second year of the Majors, but still looking for his first goal in a St. Michael's uniform. Overager, final year of eligibility. Finished last year with the Louisiana Ice Skaters, Doug Shedden's team in the East Coast Hockey League. But on the advice of his agent, uh, returned to the Ontario Hockey League for his overage year rather than continuing in the East Coast Hockey League. But you never know. He uh, had the opportunity to continue there. Well, you know, coming back to the OHL as an over overager has proven uh, in this league to uh, benefit those that do that. Uh, Steve Thomas comes to mind. Uh, playing for the, for the Marlboros in his overage year and uh, stepped up to the big ranks the following year after uh, not even being drafted. And so that says something for, uh, for being the overage and bringing the leadership and the, uh, and the experience of the team. Well, sure, if you stay in the O, you stay in the spotlight. The O is uh, incredibly heavily scouted. Far more scouts in the, in the media room than media before, uh, before any OHL game in, in any rank. And obviously this is the prime feeder league, the OHL, part of the CHL for the National Hockey League. So the scouts are all over this league as our NHL representatives monitoring the, the players have already drafted and monitoring their development. And another good reason to head down to Maple Leaf Gardens and catch a major junior hockey game, you never know who you're going to run to in, run into in the crowd. I know Bobby Orr's at a lot of these games. It's a little harder to find these days. The place is a lot bigger, but he had his regular spot at St. Michael's Arena. He was a, a regular there last year monitoring Charlie Stevens. And the, the Orr agency does have seven players on the Barry Colts. 
including the former major Andre Lacos as well as Daniel Kachuk. So you figure the group is out in force here. We we mentioned Darren Ferris is here. Ed Hill. Darren Ferris uh, achieving notoriety this week. Uh, last week rather in the Charlie Stevens controversy that whole situation with Stevens missing a day of school uh, prior to the deal the three-way deal with the Sudbury Wolves and the Guelph Storm well I know that the uh, the deal that the St. Mike's did with uh, with Ryan Barnes uh, they're pleased as punch uh, that, uh, that they got Barnes and he's been a real uh, he's been a real treat to watch he's, as you said earlier he's uh, scored a number of points since he's come to the St. Mike's team and uh, he's, he's playing consistently and I think that's what they're looking for um, out of Charlie Stevens and they weren't getting it uh, at least to their satisfaction and hence that was the uh, uh, the uh, the formula in, in putting the trade together well no denying Stevens talent but Ryan Barnes has uh, certainly stepped in and is putting up points at a pace that Stevens hadn't uh, put the points up here in Toronto but Charlie Stevens certainly has a potential to really put it together in Guelph but as Mike Feuda said at the end of our last broadcast versus Guelph on Sunday the key to the deal as far as the majors were concerned they had a player that wanted to be here Ryan Barnes wants to be here Charlie Stevens quite frankly did not he asked for the trade got the trade and why not why not why not try to accommodate everybody and and and, uh, and make everybody happy tomorrow night Glenn Goldup and I will be in Oshawa for the Oshawa Generals and the Toronto St. Michael's Majors live on the Fan 590 and tomorrow afternoon Glenn Gold of our Sunday afternoon rather Glenn Gold and I uh, will continue here in Maple Leaf Gardens for the Rogers fan a simulcast the majors and the Kitchener Rangers 1 30 Sunday afternoon so lots of majors broadcast coverage on both Rogers and the fan coming up this weekend as the Colts roll it to the goal mouth and Corey Batten applies the glove 723 the time remaining here in the third period. Now, I mentioned it earlier that uh, this is, uh, as I said, one of the uh, one of the uh, only games that I've seen where uh, where St. Mike's is actually outshot uh, by the other team. You know, it's 40 to 25 in favor of in favor of Barry, and uh, you know when you got a scoring team like Barry and you don't put up as many shots on the clock, uh, you don't have much chance of uh, of coming out with a win. I like this rookie. If you can believe it, against the Plymouth Whalers on uh, Saturday, they didn't even dress. Uh, Jerry Connell, a good-looking rookie, six foot three, but. This is a very deep Barry Colts team. Adam DeLue uh, being sat out for this evening's game. Uh, Coach Bert Templeton telling us before the game, uh, nothing wrong with DeLue. Shot for the point. Andre Lacko scores. And the Colts go in front 6-1. to one. The former major uh, drilling it home from the point as a skirmish breaks out to the left of goaltender Corey Batten. Andre Lacos wouldn't have a lot of former teammates with the majors. Only eight of them are back. Lacos, let's fly. And, oh, he's threading the needle. Found a hole in traffic. Yeah, uh, some traffic in front of the net there, and uh, Corey Batten had a tough time seeing that. And... Well, that's Andre Lacos' game. He's, he's good from the point. Not a great rushing defenseman, but he certainly knows what to do with the puck for the point. Andre Lacos has put up some pretty decent numbers with the, with the Barry Colts this year. A lot of their defensemen can generate offense. Uh, that's the second goal of the year. Nine points in ten games for Andre Lacos on the Colts defense. Here's a fight right off the puck drop. It's Daryl Bootland and the Penizzato. major player. Yeah, is Jason Penizzato. And away they go as Penizzato is uh, down in the crouch position. Bootland landing a couple of lefts. Now uh, Penizzato uh, erupts. Revives and there's a couple of lefts by Pinizzato as Pinizzato keeping Bootland at arms like Bootland fighting gamely as well. Fairly even battle. A couple of tough competitors here. They've got to be tiring by now. Now uh, Pinizzato hanging on as Bootland tries to get the left free. There's the right. Bootland lands a couple of shots. This is a real barn burner of a fight, Glenn. Uh, reminiscent of one of your old fights with the Marlies. <laughs> Well, uh, I think the key for uh, for Bootland there was getting the uh, getting the helmet off early on Pinizzato and uh, uh, Trust me, from experience, it's no fun hitting the visor with your hands. It, uh, it not only uh, uh, doesn't have any effect, but it also hurts you for the, uh, uh, hurts your hands for any type of future endeavors you want to might partake in, whether it's to score a goal or to have another fight. Uh, the hands get bruised up and cut up pretty easily when you're hitting the helmet consistently. Well, they, they rehearsed, I think they made a, a date for that one. They rehearsed that one right off the faceoff. They went at it. They, uh, well, that happens from time to time, especially in a game like this. It's garbage time now, 6-1. Colts leading the majors. We use the uh, the basketball term, garbage yeah, time. Yeah, the uh, you know a little frustration on uh, St. Mike's part, and uh, maybe uh, Jason just trying to stir up uh, a little bit of excitement.
for the team to try to rejuvenate the uh, the efforts and, and get them you know somewhat back in this game and uh, you know uh, I think I think uh, it's important for people to understand that even at a 6-1 uh, game the game's not over first of all second of all uh, they have a game on Sunday against Kitchener and they want to make sure that uh, they go into that looking good and feeling strong and uh, the best way to do that is to, is to finish uh, finish uh, tonight well and again we just talked about they're in Oshawa tomorrow night so nothing better than going into Oshawa tomorrow night feel like you, you completed the game at, at a at a strong level and uh, sort of take it from there well, Daryl Bootlin, we saw a shot of Daryl looking very pleased with his effort in that exchange with Jason Pinizzato, and Pinizzato has reason to be pleased as well. Bootlin uh, puts his jersey back on in the penalty box. Making quite a production out of it, standing up. But let's get back to the play as Sean Cation takes it back of the St. Michael's goal. 6-1 the score, the Colts leading the majors. Andre Lacos has been given credit for that sixth Barry Colts goal. No assists on the play. Lacos, number two, second goal of the year at 12.48. Former major scoring against his former team. Puck rolls into Toronto territory. Sean Cation gives chase. Cation back of the net. Cation fights off the check. Left wing from Mulder, intercepted by Kevin Parfrey. Came in for the point. Parfrey in traffic. Now Mulder steals it, and Mulder leads the rush to center. Mulder, right wing from Mike Guff. Guff working on Hideki. Hideki takes Guff out of the play. A couple of big boys colliding along the boards. Now Hideki moves it ahead. Connell, another large body, throws it out the center, and Mark Popovic turns. Popovic under pressure from Claire as Burt Templeton's got all the, the youngsters on the ice. Hideki, right wing. Hideki fires it into the Toronto zone. Puck carries around behind the net. Quickly Sheldon Keith to it. Keith throws it to center as number seven, Ed Hill, fires it right back in. Major's number seven, Mark Popovic. Nice move by Popovic. We, we, we expect to see a lot more of those kind of moves. Mark Popovic, the smooth skating Major's blue liner, waiting for that wrist to heal. And once that wrist is fully healed, here's a chance. Kachuk, Kachuk in alone, shoots, and Corey Batten to save another save by Corey Batten, denying the sharpest shooter. On the Barry Colts, the captain, Daniel Kachuk. You know, to uh, to, to relate about uh, Mark Popovic, the smooth skating Popovic, uh, uh, we definitely want to see more of his offensive ability out on this ice rink, but uh, he's got to have someone cover for him. There was a perfect situation there where uh, uh, Popovic went forward, but uh, the defenseman didn't cover him, and Barry had themselves an opportunity uh, letting uh, uh, Kachuk in all by himself. Tim Verbeek certainly bounced around the Ontario Hockey League. Played with Kitchener and Sarnia last year. And now the Barry Colts lineup. Daniel Kachuk on the draw for the Colts. But the Majors control the draw and clear the zone. As Daniel Kachuk hustles back. Kachuk, a good skating, playmaking center for the Barry Colts. Drafted number one overall. In 1995 by the Barry Colts. Shot right on. And Corey Batten will make the save. Daniel Kachuk going to the expansion. Barry Colts first overall in 1995. Barry Colts had almost instant success as an expansion team. It had a lot to do with, well, drafting a player of Daniel Kachuk's caliber and had some good imports in the lineup. And a great hockey well. and a great hockey community. Uh, being from Burlington and uh, having the Burlington uh, Junior B at the time, Cougars, uh, as the as the team in Burlington, uh, always a longtime rival of Barry Colts when they used to be a junior B team. So the hockey community was already uh, uh, supporting the Barry Colts Junior A franchise, and uh, they've done a great job up there. Ryan Barnes steps in. Colts control the draw, working very quickly, but the puck rolls to that, and Finley had to be alert. Now the rookie Kevin Parfrey can't clear the zone. Jefferson steals. Jefferson to Barnes. Barnes has to turn around. Works it low for Jefferson. Jefferson, back of the net. Sheldon Keith there as well. Here's Jefferson. Keith, side of the net. Puck hops over his stick, but Keith hustles back. Barnes follows up. Puck high along the glass. Jefferson chasing Parfrey, whose giveaway caused all this. Kept into the line again. Shot right on, and Brian Finley makes a save on Sheldon Keith from the top of the faceoff circle. Yeah, puck was just a little bobbling there, and uh, Keith couldn't get any wood on it. But uh, these three players are dangerous down in the offensive end. Ryan Barnes, there we see, is uh, getting ready for the next face-off. And uh, Mark Napier is going to make a change. So what's Mark Napier doing? Well, he's switching up the lines. 
Brian Finley, what a season he had last year. The Barry Colts goaltender. Just a standout season as an underager. And as Daniel Kachuk said in the first intermission, he thinks Brian Finley will be a surefire NHL first round draft pick this year. This is Brian Finley's draft year. It is Corey Batten's draft year as well in the majors that I think Corey Batten will attract some attention. He's got that uh, NHL size for a goaltender. And speaking of goaltenders, I just uh, noticed down to the right of me here, the camera can't catch it, but uh, Rick Walmsley having a seat and uh, doing a little scouting of his own. Yeah, Rick Walmsley's an assistant coach, an associate coach with the Barry Colts this year, uh, specifically working with the young goaltenders. Rick Walmsley, no stranger to this building, has worked for the Maple Leafs for several years, former Leaf goaltender, Leaf assistant coach, the Mike Murphy last year. Centering attempt by the Colts, number 24, Jeff Tetzlaff. He's looking for the hat trick. Majors force the turnover. George Nistis skates it around his man. Nistis right wing for Brock Boucher. Boucher to center. Stops. As Hideki forces Boucher off the puck. And Hideki, it looked like you should have challenged the Boucher after the fact, but Boucher skated away. And the puck rolls into Toronto territory. Big number 18, Rick Hideki. Activated for this game with the Majors. He did not play in the 5 1 loss to the Plymouth Whalers on Sunday. Good look at uh, Rasmussen there for St. Mike's Majors. Hasn't uh, seen a lot of ice time today, but uh, or tonight. But I know that they're expecting a lot of good things out of Ryan this year uh, here, in, uh, here in Toronto. Born in 1981, and uh, he's a uh, instrumental this year in, in trying to put this blue line together for the uh, St. Mike's Majors and holding it together. And uh, he's, a, he's a big kid himself. Well, yeah, he's 6'3". He's one of five rookie defensemen uh, yeah. for the majors this year. Yeah. Late draft pick, Aurora kid. Good character guy. Caught in the numbers game in the last game against Guelph, but Gerald Moriarty's injury, spot opened up for him for this evening's game. Here's right off the draw. Ryan Barnes lets it go, knocked down, and Michael Hendrick will skate it out right wing. Michael Henrik hustling down the right wing. Henrik to the puck, to the net, shot. And number 15, Connell trailing on the play. Connell exchanged shoves with Keefe, and Jefferson uh, came in defending Keefe, and I think uh, somebody's going to get a penalty here behind the play, but we saw how Mike, Mike Jefferson's still in Connell's face, and now we have a scrap to Ryan the left of Batten. Yeah, it's Michael Henrik and Ryan Rasmussen. What kind of matchup is this? Uh, not to disparage either player, but uh, Henrik not known as a fighter, and yet here he is engaged in a, a rumble with Ryan Rasmussen, more of a wrestling match. Here you describe this, uh, Glenn. You're the actual Well, they're, they're, they're dancing anyway, and they're trying to get some leverage on, uh, on each other, both of them tying up each other's arms, and uh, they're, they're grabbing it. I don't think it's going to be too long before the lines would come in and break this thing up. Oh, that, that, wasn't, uh, that wasn't much of a, a scrap at all. Uh, not even worth awarding a winner there. <laughs> <laughs> the, line, the linesman having, I, I, having I a think, little I think, chuckle. I think, I think the referee's going to have a hard time making this a five-minute penalty. <laughs> well, full credit to Ryan Rasmussen. He answered the bell, such as it was. Let's look at Michael Henrik's penalty stats. Well, he's got... He had four whole minutes coming into this game, so that was clearly well, now his, he has, he has his, another five to that, and he's up to nine. Well, that was clearly his first fight of the year, and... Well, Ryan Rasmussen, he had, well, he had two minutes coming in, so they... So they up, they up their PIM totals, uh, as, yeah, as they say. considerably. Just neither player is terribly physical. Rasmussen, you know, not, at this stage of the game, not throwing the big body checks, but, you know, with, with, with his size, 6'3", this is definitely a physical element to his game. And we already mentioned now, Bert Templet said he doesn't, have, he doesn't have anybody specifically tough or playing that, that tough role on this uh, Barry Coles team, but uh, as we just saw there, everybody... Uh, Everybody uh, having a uh, uh, having the sense that uh, toughness is, is, is definitely part of everybody's game on this Barry Colts team. Mike DeJong will have the three stars immediately following the game. Uh, let's kick around a few possibilities as we like to do. Uh, maybe Corey Batten, although six goals, but he has yeah. faced a lot of rubber. Yeah, I'd say Tetzlaff has definitely got to be in there. Uh, yeah. um, you know, I, I, I think somewhere in the mix, you might want to consider either Ryan Barnes or uh, Sheldon Keefe for the efforts that they put in tonight. But, but, uh, but it is a 6-1 game, so you're not going to go wrong with a lot of Barry Colts. No, certainly you not. You mentioned Ted Slaff. I like the way Connell played today, the rookie, Jerry Connell. Yeah. We also have uh, Scott Cameron, another good rookie with a couple of assists. Schmidke's had a good game. Bootland's had a good game. Yeah, Bootland's had a good game. Andre Lacos is uh, 
has netted a goal, and he's been a stand-up defenseman all game. Here's Keefe letting it go from just inside the line. High rising snapshot knocked down by Brian Finley. As now the Colts clear the zone. Michael Henrik is in the penalty box. Serving um, a four minute penalty. So let's get this sorted out. Henrik four minutes for butt ending, five minutes for fighting, and Rasmussen five for fighting. So that explains the scuffle. Rasmussen clearly responding to the butt end by Michael Henrik, who incurred a four-minute double minor, putting the majors on the power play for the remainder of this game, barring any future penalties. Here's Schwitke. Schwitke takes it to the net. Schwitke right in, trying to jam it by Batten. Another shot, and Batten had to reach for it. Geez, you're wondering who's on the power play here. Exactly. So full credit to Ryan Rasmussen was not going to let the butt end go unresponded to. As Brian Finley gloves it down and now uh, Ed Hill took a shot at Jason Cannon after the fact. Sheldon Keefe skating to the bench. 2.22, the time remaining here in the third period. The majors will at least have the pleasure of finishing the game quite possibly on the power play, barring any future penalties. 3.02 remaining in the penalty to Michael Hendrick, 2.22 in the third period. So for all intents and purposes, majors should stay on the power play for the remainder of this third period. Yeah, and it's a good opportunity for the majors to try to net a couple quick goals here late in the game to, again, build that uh, build that air that, they'll, that they're going to need going into Oshawa tomorrow night. Face off to the left of Brian Finley. Majors of five, skaters to four. Nick Smith will take the draw for the Barry Colts. Kenny Karoop for the Majors. Shot right off the faceoff, and Brian Finley had to be sharp. Brock Boucher. Here's a shot for the point. Knocked down in front as Popovic's shot hit Brian Simpson. Simpson, Karoop, and Boucher the line for the Majors. Popovic, right point. Finds Karoop. Karoop puts on the brakes. Karoop leaves it for Brock Boucher. Boucher to Popovic, back to Boucher. Boucher, cross ice, Nist is shooting, and where is that puck? Brian Finley has it. Now, Brian Finley's got to eat his pads, but he looked right behind him, uh, didn't know whether it snuck under or not. Great, great power play unit there for the St. Mike's Majors, and uh, moving that puck around well. There we see Pinizzato heading off the ice after his uh, melee, and he doesn't look any worse, uh, worse off. Well, that was a much better scrap, Pinizzato and at Bootland earlier than the uh, Rasmussen Hendrick effort. Face off to the right of Brian Finley. Jefferson stepping in against Tim Verbeek. 151 remaining in the third period. Jefferson wins the draw. Jason Cannon, left point. Cannon finds Cation. Cation wrist shot, low shot to the net. And turned aside by Brian Finley. Quickly, Ryan Barnes on the puck. Burns steps away from Mike Christian and the referee. Now finds Jason Cannon. Cannon shoots right on, and Finley the same. Rebound, they score! Great effort by the St. Mike's Majors. Uh, Ryan, Ryan Barnes. Barnes picks up his second for the night. And uh, again, it's that uh, it's that uh, Quinny Hawks uh, connection. Well, Mike Feudon not uh, ecstatic over the recent turn of events, but nonetheless pleased with Ryan Barnes' goal. Narrows the gap to 6-2. Mike Feuda, the assistant coach of the St. Michael's Majors behind the bench. Here we see Cannon taking the first shot here. And uh, stopped uh, by, by Finley without a problem. Puck goes off into the corner. Ryan Barnes grabs a hold of it and uh, puts it again underneath the legs of Finley. I think that's uh, I think that's Finley's weakest spot, at least that what we've seen tonight. The, uh, the goals that have gone in have been underneath the pads and uh, through the legs. So a two-goal game for Ryan Barnes. Both majors goals this evening here at Maple Leaf Gardens. Barnes with four goals in four games of the majors. Here's Cation. Cation turning. Major still on the power play. Keith and Cannon drawing the assists for the St. Michael's Majors. So despite the 6-2 score, Sheldon Keith. Still putting up the points to assist in this game. Here's a quick shot by Martin Skula. Batten turns it aside. Final minute of play here in the third period as Jason Cannon skates it ahead for Brian Simpson. Simpson on the dump in. Simpson hustles after it. Dragged down by Andre Lakos. It's funny watching those two 
Bang and Crash. They used to joke around a lot on the bus together. They sat very close to each other last year. Here's George Nistis with the drop. Doesn't work. Looking for Simpson. Brock Boucher follows up. As the puck comes to the line, the Majors can't keep it in. Sean Cation, right wing for George Nistis. Nistis for Jefferson. Jefferson collides with Verbeek, and there they go. Jefferson and Verbeek. Jefferson doesn't take anything. He responds to pretty well everything that comes his way. Look at Verbeek. This is a good little fight. Couple of scrappers. Jefferson's a tough little customer. So is Verbeek. And away they go. There's Jefferson landing the right. Down goes Verbeek. And Jefferson wins the wrestling portion of that scrap. Your analysis, Glenn Lewis. Well, my analysis <laughs> on that is, uh, once again, we've got to look to how quick does the bucket come off the head. Uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to, to wail away on someone's helmet and uh, and injure your own hands. It doesn't, doesn't serve any purpose. And... Uh, uh, many times in this league, I've seen the I've seen the two players, you know, agree to taking their helmets off prior to the scuffle, and uh, you know, presenting a a, a, a a man of honor type of presentation in the sense that that's the way they want to go about it. And uh, you know, I got to I got to call that one a draw. I think a lot of a lot of a lot of punches were thrown, but I don't think too many were connected. Well, usually in a draw, we we find a way to tilt it slightly in favor of the major. So. Well, up to this game, actually, we we really haven't had to do that, have we? Uh, the majors uh, have definitely. Uh, I've uh, done a lot of battling well, and come well, out on top on most situations. Now, I, I think if you consider that Jefferson was able to wrestle him down towards the end, maybe <laughs> we can just add a couple of the extra points in his favor. And hey, uh, got to give her beat. Got to give her beat well, a little what, bit. A, a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, a. Uh, well, what does Mark Napier think? You know, Napier's mulling this one over. Well, Mark, well, Mark Napier. Yeah, I mean, this is something that they wanted to stay away from this year. Was the uh, was the frivolous uh, fighting? Uh, I was watching the two of those players. It was pretty much agreed upon that when the opportunity presented itself. They were going to drop the gloves and they were going to go at it. And uh, uh, Napier again uh, wants to, wants to have a more disciplined team this year, where they can you know uh, take to the next game the positive stuff that happened and, and try to keep the negative stuff behind. And this certainly doesn't add well, you to know, it. You know, it's not the fighting that hurt them today. It's not even penalties. It was the breakdowns in their own zone early in the third period that turned this game from a 3-1 to a 5-1 game. Very tough to come back against and, uh, the Mary Colts. We've seen penalties hurt them in other games, but yeah. not, not so much not tonight. So much tonight. Yeah, you're right. I, uh, I had the pleasure of watching Barry in the preseason uh, at, at St. Mike's Arena play them, and uh, uh, it was a great game until they, uh, again, scored the third or fourth goal, and then the, uh, the Barry Colts went on to, to walk all over the St. Mike's team in the, in the exhibition as, season. Yeah, that was a one-sided game as we wind this one down. Puck comes loose at center as Scott Cameron gives chase, but the horn beats him to the puck. So the game is over here at Maple Leaf Gardens. The final score, the Barry Colts 6 and the Toronto St. Michael's Majors 2. The Barry Colts win the first of six meetings between the two teams this year. The Majors suffer their third straight loss as their record falls to 2-7-2. Two, and two. The Barry Colts improving to 7-3. and three. And the Majors still winless here at Maple Leaf Gardens. The Majors record here at Maple Leaf Gardens dropping to 0-5. And two. Barry Colts have to be very happy with their uh, efforts tonight. And uh, Toronto St. Michael's got a little practicing to do. So the Barry Colts bounce back from that 5-1 loss to the Plymouth Whalers on Saturday. Let's uh, bounce it downstairs to our studio host, Mike DeJean. Well, after a couple of tough outings here, a couple of good outings here at Maple Leaf Gardens, a tough one tonight for the St. Michael's Majors, taking it on the chin in more ways than one against the Barry Colts by a final of 6-2. We'll be back on St. Michael's Majors Hockey after this from Maple Leaf Gardens.
in the circle. Here's Katzer. Backhand, he scores! Here's Zorin now coming on a breakaway the other way. Steve Zorin shoots, he scores! Drifting it off to the far side. Centering pass to Robichaud, he scores! To Galachi, up top. Cannon with the run, he scores! Majors win! Majors win! Maple Leaf Gardens, the Barry Colts beat the Toronto St. Michael's Major 6-2 in the first of six meetings between the Central Division rivals this season. And joining us now is the first star of the game, Jeff Tetzlaff, uh, his first two-goal game of the season. Jeff, a pretty good outing by, by your team out there tonight. Yeah, we played a solid 60-minute game. I mean, uh, that's what we wanted to do coming in. Uh, we know it's a divisional game, and uh, we're, we're just looking to build, you know, on uh, a good weekend last week, and we had two out of three out west, and... Uh, I mean, we just got to keep winning games here. We got two more divisional games this weekend, so we just got to hopefully get away from our division early. Yeah, some have said obviously the Central Division with a couple of uh, first and second year teams is is a little easier maybe than some of the other divisions, but you really can't approach it that way, can no, you? No, you can't at all. I mean, any team on any given night can beat anybody. So I mean, that's the way we approach every game. And uh, I mean, if we lay down, teams are going to beat us. So we just got to you know go out and play a 60-minute game every night. What about the pressure on your team this year? I mean, there's some guys, you know, back from NHL camps. Other guys are hoping, obviously, to get drafted. Well, what kind of pressure do you, do you face as opposed to a team like St. Michael's? Well, there's a lot of pressure. I mean, last year we felt the pressure, and I guess, uh, you know, that got to us. I mean, we were in first place at Christmas time, and then we fell apart in the second half, so, and we lost in the first round. So uh, we know that happened last year, and we have that in the back of our minds, and we don't want to let, let that happen again this year. So, I mean, we've learned from that, and uh, we just got to go out this year, you know. Make uh, do different things and hopefully be success successful. Great, thanks for joining. Yeah, no problem. Jeff Tetzlaff of the Barry Colts, two goals tonight. The first star of the game. We'll get to the three stars in a few seconds here, but first upstairs to Tim Haffey and Glenn Lowe's. Thanks, Mike. Jeff Tetzlaff, the first star of the game, scored a couple of goals, scored 20 goals in this league last year, the Barry Colts and uh, Ottawa boys. So uh, shining here, Maple Leaf Gardens this evening. Great game this evening he had and. Uh, uh, Barry played a fine game, and uh, they deserve to win this game tonight. There's no doubt about it. Well, the Majors got a goal in that third period. They lost the game 6-2, but we will take a look at their second goal. Ryan Barnes, second goal of the game. Or Andre Lacos. We'll look at uh, Andre Lacos' goal, the, the former Major. <laughs> Here we see uh, Lacos uh, basically finding the finding a very fine hole in the, uh, in the uh, St. Mike's end. Uh, puck comes out to him, and there's a lot of traffic in front of the uh, Toronto goaltender, Corey Batten. And uh, he struggles to see where the puck is going. Andre Lacos, here we see a great, great screen here by the Barry Colts player. Gets his skate up. Corey Batten didn't see it. And uh, good job by Andre Lacos in getting the puck to the net. Well, that looked like Jerry Connell providing the, the screen, number 15, the, the fine young rookie, second-round draft pick for the Barry Colts. But a oh, nice job by Andre, La Andre Lacos. Nice reach. Uh, used his 6'6 uh, six six size to, uh, well, to... Well, he used it well is what I'm trying to say <laughs> to keep the puck into the blue line and got a nice low shot and as you mentioned uh, the Colts player setting up the screen and and that was the last goal for the Colts put them up 6-1 they were well in control at that point Ryan Barnes getting one back for the majors but tough loss for the St. Michael's majors up against a pretty good team some early defensive lapses I thought in their own zone cost them and then uh, Barry was able to pad the lead as the majors had to uh, open things up well they've got five more times to try to uh, try to uh, rectify the problem as you might say and uh, I'm sure they're going to be uh, Looking forward, and they're going to be licking their chops to get a hold of Barry next game. Well, the Majors in Oshawa tomorrow night. We'll have that game for you live on the Fan 590, and then back here on Rogers and the Fan Sunday afternoon for the Kitchener Rangers. And, Glenn, the Majors have to find a way to win here at Maple Leaf Gardens. Winless in seven starts at the Gardens so far. Let's go back downstairs to Mike DeJong. Thanks very much, guys. Well, yeah, that's true. They are winless here at Maple Leaf Gardens. The Majors with only two wins on the season, both coming on the road. This was their third straight loss tonight. But really, as we mentioned, the Majors have been in most of their games so far, including that loss to Guelph last Sunday here. So today was, you could call it their first real blowout of the season, but it came against their Central Division rivals, the Barry Colts. 
So that uh, was the most inopportune time for that. But let's take a look at the third period summary. Uh, Daryl Bootland putting Barry into the 4-1 to one lead with his sixth goal of the year. That came at the 123 mark from Cameron and Connell. Jeff Tetzlaff, our, uh, our post-game guest there from Christian and Skula, and he scored at 509, followed by Andre Lakos, the former St. Michael's major with that slap shot from the point at the 1248 mark. And then Ryan Barnes of the majors got one back from Keefe and Cannon, making it 6-2, to two, the final at 1830 of the third period. Let's take a look at our three stars. Jeff Tetzlaff, as we told you, with two goals, the overager from Ottawa. Scott Cameron with two assists in this one for the Barry Colts. And Jerry Connell, the rookie, with his first OHL goal, also added an assist. So the St. Michael's Majors lose their third straight game, 6-2 to two to the Barry Colts for Tim Affey and Glenn Lowe's. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again Sunday when the Majors battle the Kitchener Rangers. Thanks for joining us on St. Michael's Majors Hockey.